So we've just had a conversation. Me and Jamie have had a full catch up while Kieran's been driving to get some signal from somewhere. See, that's dedication to the podcast. Where have you drove yeah. to? Bro, 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 listen, I, I even, I got, when I was at the shows this weekend looking after, after clients, Carissa came to the caravan to go to like O2 and all that and find out the best internet and get it all set up in the caravan. And I'm still sat in a car in some random place like the Hills of Eyes kind of shit trying to fucking get us some signal. Look like you're dogging. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, but it, looks, uh, yeah. it, looks, it looks steamy in there as well, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With that filter on, mate, fucking hell, it's like it's steaming oh, up in the car. So we have, obviously, everybody knows Jay. Um, I don't even have to fucking introduce him. But how are you, bro? I know we just had a catch-up, but how, how's everything? Yeah, man, it's um, been a very interesting phase of my life. <laughs> We've obviously going through an injury because this was my first operation that I've ever had in my entire life, you know? So, I mean, obviously, I've always, like, had, well, you know, you've been through yourself you've always had like adversity and we've always kind of got over it but this was kind of a different um type because i don't know about you but every time we've had and i'm at some adversity we've been able to take like the energy that the negative energy and like kind of put it into the gym we've always this that. year yeah exactly but this was like total opposite for me because technically i wasn't allowed to train you know mm. so it, it it definitely made me like rethink and reevaluate kind of everything because I don't know, like it was a, yeah, it was a tough situation to, to deal with mentally more than physically, you know, but um, I'm, I'm back on the mend, which is good. You know, I, I got told I could train properly uh, last week. So, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of taking it slow and slowly, slowly getting to where I need to be. But it's, um it's been, yeah, different. <laughs> I think, obviously, we know, and most people will know, I know it's going to be annoying retelling everybody kind of what happened, but yeah. obviously for people who might have just stumbled across this podcast randomly, like, what actually happened then? Just to clear the air. Okay. So, I'm I'm really transparent, you know, like, when I, we all take PEDs, like, everyone fucking knows, I'm pretty sure everyone who watches this podcast knows that we take fucking gear, Um, but I, I've always microdosed, so that means, like, obviously, dosing my shots daily. And I've always rotated sites, so I never have any scar tissue. You know, like, you see tons of guys now with, like, blown-out delts, like, lumps in the glutes, shit like that. So I've always rotated, you know, my sites would usually be my delts, uh, my glutes, my lats, triceps, even the short head of my bicep I've done. Um, and I just rotate every single day, so I don't have to create any kind of scar tissue. Now, I've used the same, like, stuff pretty much for the last two, three years. Um, and I've never had a bad jab, like, touch wood. Anyway, I usually would always, like, do my shots before bed. But I was, like, six weeks out from Texas Pro, which was the planned show that I was going to do. And um, I basically thought, fuck it, I'm just going to shoot in the morning. You know what it's like when you get tired in prep and you're, you're getting close and you're just like, oh, I don't really want to inject. You know, we all go through that sort of stage. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to, like, do it in the morning because it's done then, because it's a rest day, and then I don't have to do it at night. And then I actually, what I did is went for some treatment after. Now, I don't know whether the treatment has caused some sort of inflammation or infection or something like that, um, but I've shot my arm, and then I've gone for treatment, and then my arm has just started to swell like fuck like the few days after. Oh, no. So well, treatment, just, just massage work. Yeah, just deep tissue massage. And I don't know about you, but every time I've had it in the past where I've like I've, I've had an injection and then someone's like gone deep over the site like the day after and I've got a little bit of like an inflammation. I've had that quite a yeah, lot. I've always had that. Yeah. Yeah, I, imagine, exactly. mate, I always stay clear of anything like that, yeah. Yeah, so I actually said, I was like, oh, just try not to massage my arm. And I think they've kind of massaged like my brachialis. So anyway, the next day it woke up and it started to swell and I was like, okay, it's obviously something's like not right and it's inflamed. I was like, I'll give it a few days, you know, see if it's okay. And then it started getting worse and worse. And then I thought, fuck, okay, let me just go to like urgent care, um, get some antibiotics and see if that sort of helps. And I started antibiotics for like three days and it got worse. And I was like, fuck, I, I best just go to the fucking hospital just to be safe, you know? 
Um, so anyway, we've gone to the hospital and they've been like, um, okay, we need to, they, they like did loads of checks, like blood work, blah, blah, blah. They're like, okay, we need to operate a new ASAP. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, and they're like, I was like, can I go home after? And they're like, yeah, you can go home after. Anyway, so I got operated on ASAP and then I woke up, I woke up and uh, she was like, how do you feel like you're really sick? And I was like, what do you mean I'm really sick? Like, she was like, do you feel okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I feel normal. Like, obviously, I was six weeks out, so you start to get a little bit tired anyway, right? You're, like, a little bit tired from prep. And they were like, your kidneys are, like, close to fucking failure. And I was like, fuck. Um, so they told me that, and I didn't really know what to think. And then they basically uh, did the operation, told me that, and they're like, we need to keep you here for, like, a, until your kidneys are, like, back to, to normal. And I was like, okay, so, obviously... Everyone who knows, like, kidney failure is, like, fucking serious, right? So there's no coming right. back from kidney failure. Yeah, there's no coming back yeah. from it. It's not like – it doesn't regenerate, like, the, the way your liver regenerates or anything like that. Um, so, obviously, that just shit me up. And then I remember the first thing the surgeon came in and said, right, i just come out of an operation. She was basically like, you're really sick. Your kidneys are about to fail and bodybuilding's over. And I was just like, wow. Oh, like, imagine waking up from an operation and just hearing that. So my head, bro, I was – it was like the darkest few days of my life. Anyway, after I was in there for a while, you know, they were taking my bloods like every fucking, they were taking them like four or five times a day. Um, and obviously I, I read blood work. So I was like, after about two, three days, I was like, look, let me see the blood work. Because like, obviously they've got me thinking all sorts of shit. So I'm like, right, I want to see the blood work and see what it's like. And I was like, my kidney, well, by then my kidney numbers were like slightly out of range. And I'm like, look guys, you do realize I was six weeks out. Okay um my numbers have been coming down like every single day so i was like checking them every day and then i was like look you need to take me off the fucking saline you need to take me off this you need to do this you need to do that because they just go off protocol okay what you like know? when yeah. they when they say like kidney you only have kidney failure so yeah. what did they do then did they put you on like that's i don't even know what that saline is what is it okay so, so yeah basically so they said that my, i had an infection in my arm and the infection basically went septic and started to attack my kidneys. So it started to attack my, my organs because the, the infection had spread. So they had me on fucking three different antibiotics, like strong antibiotics. And they had me on liters and liters of saline. Now saline salt water. Yeah. So it basically helps to filtrate and flush your kidneys. Okay. So, so they had me on so much saline, bro. I went from two, I come in at about, my lightest weight I was that week was 216, and I, I came out, I was 280. Fucking hell, bro. Give me yeah, and was, saline. <laughs> yeah, and it was just saline, bro. They were just flushing me with saline, and then it got to a point, I was like, look, my fucking kidney numbers are in range. Like, take me off the saline now. I said, look, this, this isn't normal. I'm holding fucking... Like, bro, I couldn't even... I swear down, they couldn't even find a vein in my fucking forearm because I had so much water retention. And um, I said to them, I was like, like, I remember when they first came in, they were like, oh, look, you've got loads of veins. Like, it's really easy to do your bloods. By the end of it, I used ultrasound on my fucking forearm to get the IV in. You know what I mean? Because and they, and they basically attach you to an IV. And the thing is, like, every time you want to go to the toilet, you've got to call the nurse. Every time you want to, like, move, you've got to call the nurse, because you've got a constant IV in you. So... There was not a fucking... Well, like, um... Well, blood pressure not through the roof then. Well, that's this is the thing, right? So they're, they're like, this is what really frustrates me about doctors. I'm not saying like, oh, don't go to doctors because I'm glad I did because obviously the injury went septic, but their protocols are just crazy. They're like, oh, your blood pressure's... Yeah. Like, I remember the first day I went, my blood pressure was perfect. By like day six, they were like, your blood pressure through the roof. I'm like, no shit, I'm 280 pounds. Mm. I'm full of fucking water, you know? Like, no shit, it's through the roof. You're pumping me with salt water. You know what I mean? So eventually they, they started to taper down the salt water. Um, and then obviously it came to, I think it was Thursday, no, Friday. They said, look, you can go home. I was like, thank fuck. So I've been in for seven days. They're like, you can go home. And they put this thing called a wound vac on my arm initially. That was the, the thing that basically what it does is it's like a sponge that goes into the wound and it like sucks the moisture out. And then I had this wound vac in. I got told I could go home. And then they were like, oh, actually, you can't go home because the portable wound vac isn't here. 
Um, it's only going to come tomorrow morning, so you have to stay another night. So imagine telling me after all that I can go home, and then now I have to stay an extra night. And telling you this place was like fucking hell. Like, you know, same four walls, no daylight, just like sat in a bed from like, honestly, the the the, the hours just went so fucking slow. And all you're doing is thinking like, what what's next? What can I do? You know what I mean? Bro, you know when they said, you know when they said to you like, body was over? Yeah. What, what, like, I, how did you even like, what did you think? I don't I don't even know, man. Like, I, I was like, I, I, I didn't even know what to think. I just, my fucking, like, it's all I've known. I remember saying to, like, my Marissa, I was like, this is all I've known. I don't know, like, what to think. Mm. I, I, after speaking, this was the thing, like, after speaking to, like, multiple surgeons after it, and the surgeon actually did the surgery, she was like, no, your bicep's going to be fine. Like, it's completely normal. Like, we've not damaged why, the why muscle. Why did you say body was over just because of your kidneys or... I, I think it's just like, you know, like some people just fucking hate, like they don't like the fact that we do like PEDs and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. you know, if you go to any doctor, they'll be like, oh, we well, shouldn't do that. Whereas like the, the surgeons I had were going to the gym. The one that did the operation on me, she used to be in sports. So she knew everything. Yeah, you so know, I, so she when, knew I went, when I went to the, the doctors of a week, Jay, you know, when I had that bit of a, um, but I had a bit of an infection and they gave me some antibiotics, right? And I said to yeah. him, um, is this going to mess my stomach up this because I'm two weeks out from a show and he went look don't want to be rude but like I'm a doctor I'm sure you put worse stuff in your body and I went yeah but I'm not on about that I'm just asking if you can upset my stomach yeah. and he went yeah. why would you ask that if you're injecting steroids and I'm like what the fuck has that got to do with this something yeah, better in your stomach it, 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 sounds, it, it was just like a, a dick of a fucking surgeon I don't know if she's in a bad mood or yeah. some shit but like I when I spoke to all the knowledge, man. Like I've said to yeah. Scott before, like if you can name me four steroids or even three steroids and like what they do or uh, like anything about them, they ain't got a clue. They just yeah, oh, exactly. Like, so and and as well, like it was just like I mean I don't know if you've seen like pictures on Instagram. My bicep's completely normal. It's atrophied a little bit, but it's like there's no. Yeah. It's literally just a scar. Like if I throw a front double bicep. He looks a little bit smaller than my left arm because obviously it's been in a sling and it's had trauma to it or surgery. But like after speaking to multiple surgeons, multiple like deep tissue, even my rehab guy, you know, he's like, no, it's strong. It's going to get back to normal. It's just atrophied. That's all, you know? It's very, it's very so, like, lucky as well, isn't it, to be fair? Yeah, it's lucky that I went in because I know it's actually funny because I was in the hospital and Cormier called me, like Chris Cormier called me. And he was like, bro, how are you feeling? I was like, mate. He was like, trust me. I said, I've been there. I know exactly how I feel. And he's like, I bet you just like started crying, didn't you? And I was like, mate, it's like everything you said is is just like, <laughs> you can't even explain it. Like he literally told me everything I was feeling because he had it where he had it in his shoulder, but his went septic and he went into a coma. Wow. Yeah, and then he woke up, and he, he like, woke up a few days later. He, he was, like, I was in, like, one of the worst places of my life after that because he said, he said the worst thing was is, like, the same fucking, this must have been, like, the 90s or whatever. It was, like, the same things was playing over and over on the fucking um, TV about how, like, great athletes had, had, had injuries and it's ended their career. And he said when he was in the hospital, he said that's all that was playing over and over and over and over. So it was, like, it was like fucking dark, man. Like I'll be straight. Like that was like probably one of the biggest like mental tests because you're just playing a mental battle in your head, right? You're like, you know, you're strong enough to overcome anything, but there's that little part in the back of your mind that's like, fuck. But what if this is like it, you know? And it's that's what, like always. It's there. what you said before, Jay. Like anything we've had throughout all our lives, like obviously we've known every like sort of um, adversity we've had. We just go fuck it, we'll prep. Literally, that would yeah. be the conversation we'd have. Yeah, like, yeah. Just prep. But it's like, yeah. you can't do that, you know? So yeah, it's like, like where, do you, where do you fucking turn to, you know? Like, you used to turn to the gym to kind of take all your... Or just forget about the bullshit of the world, right? You just mm -hmm. go to the gym. But, yeah. like, this time I couldn't. And I was like... It was like, yeah, it's just... So much shit's just played through your head, you know? And what then you're, like, your, thinking, oh, it's all worth it, blah, 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 you know? What are your plans now? Um, To be honest, like, I'm still fucking kind of, like, trying to figure everything out, like... Uh, yeah, it's still, it's still like things are playing on my head. Like obviously, you know, I'll never stop bodybuilding, and because it's all I know, it's a way of life. Like it is like my way to get away from everything in the world. But I just don't think I will. It will be the 
the focus or the sole purpose right now because I think in 2021 I was I, 2021 I actually said to myself I'm not going to compete I just want to like focus on coaching and I was like the busiest I'd ever been you know I had Rob I had Darren in the I remember I went to Alicante I had like five six pros you know I had um like Elton come stay Rob come stay and like honestly I was just happy I was so happy then because I had no goal to compete but I was doing everything, ticking every box without any pressure. Do you know what I mean? I was just bodybuilding because yeah. I love to bodybuild, but my focus was to focus on my clients and make sure that everyone's on point, you know? And that's the same year that, like, obviously I went to Spain with you, Kieran, and we did uh, the yeah, shows yeah. there. Um, and it was just my sole focus. And then I think after, like, you know, after the divorce and everything, I was like, fuck it, right? I'm going to be a little bit selfish and I, you know, I still feel like I got unfinished business in bodybuilding. So let me just put like more effort into bodybuilding, less not less effort into coaching, but like pull back on my clientele. Because at the at the time in 2021, 22, I was so fucking busy, man. I was like, I couldn't even think like about competing or whatever because I would just had so many fucking clients, and you know, I was always on point with like response time. So I was just putting all my energy into that. And then after like 2022. And there's some adversity that happened there with like getting divorced and all that shit. I was like, right, let me just like get a bit selfish, you know, put some more effort into bodybuilding and kind of not pull back on coaching, but just limit my client intake a little bit more. Yeah. You know, so I can focus yeah. on you have to so I can focus. Speed. Yeah. So I can focus on like the real high level clients and like the ones that really want to put in the work, but kind of like move away from like the lifestyle clients and that. And just focus on the really like hardcore competitive clients. And, um, yeah, well, obviously did that. And then that show didn't go to plan because <laughs> the Arnold's, mm. you know? Because um, I think I've seen you, actually, for the Arnold UK in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, and that was... Um, yeah, yeah, that it, was was all there. it was all there, yeah. Yeah. And that was the time I was like, oh, I think I'm going to do a show, but I'm not sure what show and blah, blah, blah. And then, obviously, I'd, in 2022, I came, I was like, right, let me just really try to put all my energy back into bodybuilding. That's when I come back to Wales for the Arnold Classic. And then that was a shit show because I look like a bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> so after obviously this this prep, honestly, this prep was like probably the best I felt I've I've looked that far out in terms of fullness and condition. Like I was down to two sixteen and I was full as a house. My glutes were striated, and then obviously this happened, another like setback. So you know, I, I started to think, oh, is the universe trying to tell me something, or is like you know, is it trying to make me stronger? I don't know, but I right now I just want to like I want to get back to that place where my coaching is like my sole focus and bodybuilding just comes not secondary, but like I just tick my boxes and do what I need to do. But the coaching it's side nature, is then. Yeah, the bodybuilding yeah, exactly. is just in nature, just free flows. And I just enjoy it more. Like as, as yeah. soon as I start to put more focus into bodybuilding and put all this like the pressure just comes and I'm just like I just can't, like, seem to get it right. It's funny because, like, Marissa asked me the other day, she's like, what brings you joy? She was like, I don't feel like bodybuilding brings you, like, joy anymore. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I've not felt joy from bodybuilding since 2019 because I've not won since 2019. Bro, that's what I yeah. mean. You and I had this conversation, like, going into my pro debut. And this is not because of – I think what's happened is if you've won as an amateur – you will understand this. If you've won as an amateur and everybody – ever since we've been kids at, like, 21 – these expectations for people are so high. So then, yeah. if, like, as I was going into the Island show, into my pro debut, mate, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I don't yeah, want to yeah. compete because I'm like, I'm like, what if I don't fucking do well? And then there's pressure and I'm just not enjoying it. And then it's like so much pressure to be like perform, but it's like you put it on yourself and then externally because of Instagram and we've got a big following, yeah, yeah. And we'll know our name, people, it's same with what's happened with Rob. Like, Rob's fucking got fear for He's got what a, another place in another show. And people are like, oh, he fucking flops. And it's like, but has he? Or does people just put so much expectations for us to come in with the best guys in the fucking world and just win? Yeah, it's true. And I think as well, like, I don't know about you, but if you know, like, when I used to, some of the times I remember, do you remember when um, we went to Northeast? Yeah. This was way yeah. back in, like, 2016, 17. Yeah, yeah. And I woke up in the morning, I was like, I'm on the fucking money today. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think like the last few times I've competed, I, I I've not had that feeling of like I'm fucking on today. You know, I've always been like, even like 
like three, four weeks out, I've always been like, right, I look fucking like dangerous. And then it comes to the show and I'm just wake up and I'm just like, oh, nothing pops, nothing's there. And then I just know I'm not going to enjoy the show. Whereas I feel like back in the amateur, I don't know whether it's because it's not such a big stage, but it didn't feel like you had much pressure, you know, like it was yeah. just kind of like, you just did it because you enjoyed it. Right. And then you go to pros and you're like, everyone's like expecting like big things and, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And like, you know, you get interviews for fucking, I remember I was like on RX Muscle on uh, interview for MD, like Flex Magazine cover. And it's just like, you know, and then when you don't bring it, you're just like, fuck, I just flopped. So, but I also think that you just kind of get caught up in putting too much pressure on yourself. And I just want to get back to that place where I just love bodybuilding and enjoy it and focus on my coaching because I know that's where that's what really brings me like joy and that's I know the passion, that's, bro. that's the passion yeah and like, you know I, what I, I don't feel like, like you see me at shows Kieran you see me shows yeah yeah exactly most people I feel like me when they see your name it's IFBB pro bodybuilder Jamie Dorigo but they see coach 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 yeah. you know what I mean yeah. you see more as the coach now because you've, you've made that much of an impact in the industry and as well, like you see me at shows, man. I've running around like a fucking madman just because I love it. Like well, you know, tell me that deep. Yeah, you're the same as me though, bro. Like we just love the process. We love dieting. 100%. We love training, and like the show is just like oh, for fuck's sake, right? I'm gonna have to get tanned up and shave. Like it's oh, kind yeah, of like so I don't well. actually enjoy. Like I think Kieran, you enjoy the show day, don't you? Sometimes. Yeah, like, I do you, mate? I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah. What a fucking go to a show. I, I, yeah, I, but, I, I'm not even compete. I just enjoy it. Yeah, just, that's I like me. It. And I think Kieran, like you, you, like it might change when you turn pro. I don't know. Like some people just yeah, do maybe. just love the stage, but like I never loved the stage when I was younger. But I did love the process. You know, mm-hmm. I love. I, 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 well. sort of... You you two have been competing a lot longer than me, so I'm kind yeah. of in that honeymoon stage where I'm just starting to get good now. And the hype's around just starting to come into it now. So I'm enjoying every second of that bit. But I yeah. suppose if I was competing for 10 years before it, you'd get a bit like... You get to a stage as well together. when you don't even want to post on Instagram because you can't... Not to sound bad, you can't even be asked with the good comments because you're like, you don't know what yeah. you're on about. And half these people just pull me up and don't even fucking like me. And then half of them are just going to slate me. So you're like, fuck, yeah. you can't win. So I'd rather, yeah, just not, like, I'd rather just fucking diet and then not even compete as bad as it sounds. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, bro, that, that's what my mindset was in 2021. I remember Rob telling me, he's like, you're going to compete? I was like, nah, I'm just going to diet with you guys and just, like, fucking go for everything with you guys and, you know, just get in shape. And I remember, like, going to Alcantara, everyone was like, you're competing this week. And I'm like, nah, I'm just here for my clients, you know? Mm-hmm. And 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 I want to get back. But you know what? I was happy, bro. Like, that was the thing. I was the happiest I've ever been, not only, like, in myself, but also in, um, like, in the way I felt and how I looked, you know? Mm-hmm. You get, I think you get, I do anyway, I get more fulfillment out of helping other people than I was like, you, you, you'll say you win a show, it feels great, and everyone tells you how great it is, but it's like, it's a pretty empty feeling, it's like, mm. but when you go through a process, say like Kieran or other clients, and they win, it's like, fuck, like, it feels so fucking yeah. good. Yeah, I remember when Elton Clough had Olympia, bro, and Darren, I, I fucking cry and cry with them. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. I just fucking, I qualify for Olympia. I don't get it wrong, I'm sure, like, if we, you know, we did qualify for Olympia. We would have that feeling, but I think I just need to get back to a place now where I, I'm just really enjoying it as, as if it's a hobby rather than like a a, a, a job. You know what I mean? I could do all that. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, well, the thing is, Jay. Right, I, I, well, I seen you in Alicante that time. You was in basically off season, right? But you weren't planning on competing. But it all came so easy to you. You stayed perfectly on point because there was no pressure. It's easy to yeah. stay on point when there's no pressure. You so don't feel like you, eating shit. Yeah. When you don't enjoy it, you want to eat shit. Like, when you don't enjoy it, you're like, fuck this. You know? I feel like I, yeah. when I don't enjoy it, I want to rebel. I want to say, you know yeah. what? I'm done. I'm sick of fucking, I'm yeah. sick of eating out of Tupperware. I can't be asked. And it's like I rebel against it. But have you thought anything more about, like, did it make you think more about, like, after bodybuilding? Yeah, like, it made me think, like, what what else do I enjoy doing? <laughs> because oh, like, it scares me though, bro. Because I'm like, yeah, when it's, take, well, when it's taken away from you, you're like, what actually do I like to do? You know, I like because you don't really have any Would hobbies. You know, because Amazon, Amazon, 
on Amazon looking for fishing rods, was you? <laughs> no, like, I just like started to think like, fuck, what did I like? What do I enjoy to do? Because at one point, bodybuilding was a hobby, right? And then that was my hobby. And then it turned into basically a job because it is a job. Like, you know, I just want to buy AD. We've got a wage coming in. It's like, you know, it is a fucking job. So it's like now I've got to try find, I feel like honestly, I've got to find what I enjoy to do. And usually that's something that you can learn. Like, um, like way back in the day, I used to like do Thai boxing, right? And like, I gen- genuinely enjoyed doing that because I w- it was like something that I was able to get better at, but I know I'm not going to go fucking into UFC, you know, mm-hmm. like, but it's something that you, it's like a hobby that you can kind of carry on progressing. Whereas yeah, bodybuilding yeah. is that, but it's become a job and progressions like kind of what we need to do, not what we like may not want to do. Like it's a need now, you know? I so see, it's like I'm in my gonna... head, I'm sorry, go on. Go on. No, go on. I was saying this to Jade yesterday. I was like, I think what happens with people, because Jade's obviously stopped competing. And she's like, yeah. she's like, uh, I don't really know what I want to do. And I said, what happens with people is they're like, oh, I'm going to buy a house. Oh, I'm going to have kids. And that's like their personal progression. But like us, yeah, doctors, we've always just been like, well, we're making progression every day. So we feel fulfilled. And then when it's taken yeah. away from you, or you can't do it. You're like, like, what do I do now? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, like, what, like yeah, we it's... live normal lives, do we? Do you know what I mean? No, but- I don't- and as well, we got a mindset where it's when we put our attention into something, we're all in. So it's like, it's you don't really, it's hard to have other hobbies that you enjoy that, like, because body runs so much time consuming. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like really hard to, yeah, it's really hard to find like that balance, you know? And that's, that's like why even me, like, I'm still kind of thinking, okay, like, even I said to, my partner the other day, I said, like, you know what? I'm when I get back to like Dubai, I'm just gonna get back into like Thai boxing. But then, does that just... not make you think, what if I get injured? Or yeah, it does. I'd be like, what if I get yeah, injured? Yeah, it does. Like, I was actually thinking, oh, but it's not. It means that I'm not a hundred percent optimal with bodybuilding. But I'm just like, like, fuck it. I need to be happy rather than be a hundred percent optimal right now. You know. So, yeah. and I mean, like, it, at the end of the day, it's a little bit cardio, like extra, like it is what it is, but. Right now, I think the purpose for me is like I need to get back to where I feel like comfortable and happy, um, like with how I, with how I feel and look, you know. Yeah. Because well, obviously after operation, like I've had a bit of atrophy, um, everywhere because I haven't really trained, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's to me, I just want to get back to that good, happy place and like not be solely focused on bodybuilding, as I was when I was like kind of be selfish being selfish but i know there's always going to be that part of me that what well, that feels like there's unfinished unfinished business there but i feel like i've just got to wait until that time comes and i think take a totally different approach to it i don't know if you remember when we uh when um i, I did the welsh and you stayed yeah. at mine for a little bit yeah. and we went out for like a full cheat day i swear back in the day we did not give a fuck about like it just wasn't that serious no this i is- would never I would never do that now, you know? This is what I always say. Like, I know people always always win, like, I would whinge at me for fucking going partying and stuff. And I'm like, but I just had that disconnect because it's like I'll, yeah. two or three days where I'll just have a good time and then I don't get burnt out with bodybuilding because I don't I don't think well, my whole life is just bodybuilding. And I get yeah, like, like, I'm like, I fucking feel, me and Kieran had this conversation about, I think it was James Holland said, Steady, but it feels like a prisoner to bodybuilding. Where it's like, yeah, because it's, it's hard, man. And it's hard because Instagram makes you like then then people start to judge you and then if you don't come up on point he's like oh well he parties a lot you know they, they had this so you can't win. I was driving driving to uh, shopping the other day and James was like what are you gonna do are you gonna go away and I was like no I'm not going I was like I'm not going what will everyone say she was like what would you do if you didn't have Instagram if no one mm. knew you were going would you go I was like yeah she was like go there and I was like yeah but she was like but what enjoy it like you're in your prime you earn good money you look great. You've got great people around you. Do what you want to do. And I was like, yeah. even in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, but I might not be able to be on point with my meals. And you just, it's so hard, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and and that's like one thing, that's like one thing, like when I was like back in like 2021, I was able to do it all and be on point with my meals. But like Kieran, you said, it was just second nature. Like I remember like yeah. I would go out partying, bro, in Dubai. I'm going to watch a meat meal just pop two Adderalls and fucking go party. Yeah, on, boy. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd, but I'd, I'd drink water, you know, and, and then I'd 
like have my meal when I got back in, in the day and then get there, get up in the morning, do my cardio. It was just a process where I used to go out to eat every single, like I literally used to go out to eat in Dubai like probably three, four times a week. But I'd, I'd bring my yeah. scales. I'd just fucking weigh my food. I'd have sashimi. Like I, I remember one time my kitchen shut um, from raw foods. I went out for 10 days straight for sashimi and rice just to different restaurants. And I just weigh it. Yeah, but like, I didn't even think twice. It was just my, I was enjoying it, but I was able to go out. I was able to enjoy myself. I'd go to beach clubs. You know, I'd have my meal. I'd get sashimi and rice at my beach clubs, weigh it. You know what I mean? Everything you know was what? just convenient. You know, honestly, right, I live my life like that now because obviously I do a shitload with the kids. I never say no to going to birthdays, parties or whatever. I take my scales everywhere. I take my food everywhere. And you can definitely enjoy all that. But there is certain things, like every so often, like she'll message me and go, look at this, and it's like a trip round Dubai for three, uh, round Thailand for three weeks, and I'm like, yeah, well, I can't do that. Because where's yeah, the gym? Where's the food? You know, there's yeah. certain things you just cannot do. It's impossible. Cannot do, yeah. But, and but like, I, think, I think they're like outliers where when you finish the show, you could do that. Whereas yeah. like, if you're talking about day-to-day happiness of life, being more relaxed and being like, you know what, like if I train at one o'clock or I train at four o'clock, it's not going to make matter. a difference. And if I train yeah, today, I don't mind or I train yeah. legs today, it doesn't matter. Like rather yeah. than being so like regimented to the routine that if you go off, it's like it's like perfection paralysis. You think, oh, I've got to be perfect. You know, you know what, Ryan? Fucking one. Per- J- uh, Jamie actually changed my mindset on this, right? So I was like, fucking gram to gram. This this has to be at this specific time and you know, go to the gym at this specific time. I just when I got with Jamie, he's like, bro, just fucking chill. Just just let it flow. And honestly, within like eight weeks, my body just responded straight away. Just by You know, this relaxing. is what really frustrates, this is what frustrates me, is like, I wish I could prep myself. I wish I could. <laughs> because like, whatever I tell my clients, I'm like, whenever I tell my clients, I, um, I, I literally like, the way I prep my clients is the way I wish I could prep myself, you know? But then because I put all my energy into bodybuilding, I, like, can't do it. But then when, for example, in 2021, I was doing it all myself, it was just exactly like I prepped my clients, you know? Think, do you think yep. it's, like, as we've got, as you said before, as we've got further up the ranks and now you're... I've noticed massively now in the pro league, everything was analysed in the sense of, like, if we competed and we won, say, a British, Jay... Not many people knew about it, but now if you no. think, as soon as you do a show, it's like bodybuilding without borders, bodybuilding, without yeah. borders. everybody is fucking talking about it. Like, remember, like, that's another thing. Like, I remember I didn't do my contract, you know, for the island show. And yeah. I, haven't, I haven't filled it in because I didn't want to do the show. I was like, fuck, I don't want to do it. If they don't let me do it, I'll be fucking happy. And then, yeah. Yeah, mate, I must have had like 60 messages. You're not on the list. You're not on the list, bro. What the fuck's happened? You're not on the list. I was thinking, yes. oh, God. It's just, it's just so much pressure. So I think that's the main thing for me over the next few few days. Like even today I woke up and he was like, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna just plan my own fucking meals. I'm gonna eat what I want to eat. I'm gonna do the card I wanna do, and I'm gonna fucking bring everyone in absolutely dice this year. I'm gonna win more pro cards. Yeah. That's literally what I woke up thinking. I was like, I need to this is the way I've got to do it because I'm only gonna enjoy it if I do it this way. Yeah. Like I know my body well. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. And then every time I try to prep myself, I start prepping myself differently than I would prep my clients. Yeah, and it just yeah, it's just because you're emotionally attached to it, isn't it? Yeah. Like, for example, I'd set my clients up on X amount of calories per pound, like, depending on how they look. And then I'd, like, the, the protein-carbs fat ratio would be X, Y, Z. And then when I do my own, I start putting my numbers up because I'm like, yeah, my metabolism's quick when I prep. So I can probably <laughs> diet on more food and... And then I just think, you know what, like, Jay, you're doing everything that you wouldn't do for your client. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you prepped yourself when you was younger, I remember, because that right, remember Ryan Baptiste, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you prepped yourself then, didn't you? Yeah, and then um, I prepped myself then, and then I just got someone to overlook. But it's it's weird now because, like, so this prep, I had Joe overlook, like, o- overlook and kind of let, yeah. let him take the reins from five weeks out. Uh, from six, No, from 10 weeks out, I kind of let him take the reins um and overlook and like i said it was the best prep i've i've, I've probably the I, I didn't feel like i lost fullness once but then the problem is did i enjoy it and i was like no not really like how i was you doing finding, 80... how you find america um interesting <laughs> because like you know what I, 
honestly, since I come here, it's just been a shit show with like things. Yeah. Like, so this year's just been a fucking shit show. But like, since I come here, I've just had like problem after problem after problem. I'm just like, fuck, I need to get out of here. You know, really? but obviously with the arm, I couldn't leave. Mm. Um, it feels like you're isolated. It feels like you're just totally isolated there, man. Yeah, but it, it, I am. But the thing is, like, when I was like in that prep zone, fully focused, like on prep, and you know, like our mindset switches off. It's like it was the perfect place to be. But even then, like, was I happy? No. But was I super focused and just in a place where I don't know anyone? It was very easy to prep here. But then, like, so when what, I start what, thinking. Well? What's worked well, like recently? What's worked well recently, like me, me, Ryan, and we've got Mo and and Mark, and everyone's at a good standard. We're around each other all the time. Yeah, like, you know when you say if you were to do your own prep, but you was around four to five half decent bodybuilders, you probably wouldn't miss the beat then. You probably because yeah. you'd all talk every day as soon as go fucking hell, Jay. I wouldn't bang that cal- them calories up as I, if I was you. And you're probably second thinking like, you know what, you're right. I pull them back down. Yeah, and you you kind I mean, of like- just you know. I'm kind of like always like to be very isolated in prep. Yeah. But then you know, actually... I think that's one of the biggest things, bro. Like I noticed obviously like Kieran was saying with the kids and things like that, like prep kind of just, like you said before, it just flows because it's not, it is my main priority, but I haven't really got time to worry about the minutiae details and be in my own head because you're just so fucking busy doing other Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's exactly what like that that year in twenty to one. I was like setting up raw foods. I was like fucking, you know, coaching was like insane. I remember my screen time was like fucking sixteen, seventeen hours a day on my phone just to reply. I remember even training. I had to be on my phone to reply to clients. You know, really? but I was so busy. Like, but would you like to go back to that amount of clients, bro? Really? Honestly, I feel like, yeah, would you? I loved it, man. Yeah, like yeah. thinking back, I fucking loved it. Like I, I, well, I loved it. For, it. I, all my passion. You answered your own question, I, didn't it? I, I travel the world. Like, like when I look back, when I think about traveling now, I think fuck that. But when back then, bro, I was like, fuck it. Yeah, I'll come to Spain. Yeah, I'll go here. Yeah, I'll go there. You know, I'm like, I was game for fucking anything because the way I used to like see the travel, I was like, one, this is really good for business and my clients. But I was like no, this is actually good for my mental strength, for my mental health, because it's going to test me to see if I can stay on point. But even still, like... So I you know, use it different. Yeah, I use like that. Yeah, Kieran said it before, like, it's like when we've been around each other, traveling just to like London and places like to different shows, it almost reiterates like why you're doing it as well. Because you yeah. see people and you're like, oh shit, yeah, bodybuilding is actually a fucking really big deal. And there's loads of big, there's a massive community for it. Like, I do the same, like, I'll isolate myself on prep. I don't really go to any shows. I don't really see anyone. I just fucking prep my own little bubble. But like now it's been nice going to shows and like fucking hell actually, yeah, like forgot that these yeah. guys, it's a bigger than just me bodybuilding. Do you know what I mean? And as well, like when I found like when I was doing that, I also it was good because like I remember when I had Alicante, I was like, fuck, I've got Darren, I've got Rob, I've got Cremo, I've got Honor, I've got Shannon. I had like fucking 10 clients in there, and I was like, this is gonna be te- this is gonna be hard. This is probably gonna be like one of my biggest challenges that I've like four or five pros and like six amateurs and I was like right this is going to test me but I used to look forward to the challenge because yeah, yeah. I was like this is going to test how much I can stay on point but also how good of a coach I am and you that's know? the progress and that was something that I just fucking like I would embrace but like I, I, yeah I don't know whether like sometimes I don't know whether like put, being so isolated actually makes you like worse like when you yeah. come to think of it worse, especially like what you were saying it does make you worse yeah. yeah, I yeah, tried. I, think, I tried uh, it one, once in prep once, yeah, and it fucked me up big time, like really bad. Yeah, um, and I think because especially if you get hit with adversity and you're just like, uh, okay, what now? You know, yeah. because like it's not like you've been chilling with friends or like, like bro, like I'll be straight, like I'm in fucking San Diego. I don't know fucking nobody here, man. Like yeah, I can't like, even I, come. I'm, as well, Jay, like you know, energy. You were, you're big on energy as well. It's like. When you're around people with good energy and they, they share the same mindset and they're fucking upbeat, you feed off that in prep. Do you know what I mean? So when you're on your own, you're like, oh, I'm fucked. Oh, fuck. yeah, it's, it's weird, though. I don't know if you find it, but it's weird because, like, I, I, like for example, when I'm in Dubai, I can't train at Banus. Yeah, I like to go to quite, a quiet gym and, like, train and just be in my zone. But then I'm like, yeah, that's positive for my training, but is it positive for, like, the overall prep? 
you know? You Probably need, not. Like, as prep, when you're prepping, you need a disconnect. You have to... And you need... Something... Yeah, you, you do it. And you need, I think, somewhere like you guys have said, there's a place where four or five good pros train. And, like, Benoose has that, but it also has fucking loads of, like, people who just, like, dick around and want to film and... Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like... That's it's, it's why too... that, uh, that 2021 prep was so easy because you was around them people. So you're almost yeah. like... You remember back in the day when we used to prep together and, like, you'd be on the couch and I'd be on the other couch yeah. and it'd just be like, we'd get up, we'd do this, we'd go to cardio, do that, and it'd literally be 100%. like prepping together, isn't it? Honestly, that's why, that's why when Rob and Elton lived with me, I think I just found it so easy to do it all because we actually went to, like, the quieter gyms to train, but we were around each other. Yeah, yeah. You know? There's three of you, yeah, that's right. So at the minute, we'll have, like, me, Ryan, Mo, sometimes Mark or whatever, and we all we're all in the gym together, but the gym's quiet. There's no one else in there, just us. Yeah, well, and as well, you obviously that's also impressing as well. Like Dubai's a little bit different because it's like fucking just yeah, yeah. a mad <laughs> mad t- town twenty four seven. So you're never really gonna get. I mean, like you probably would get. Um, like I, I was actually training at a dungeon gym in Dubai, Looks which good, is man. a lot. Yeah, it's really good, man. And it's uh, so Abdullah owns it, and Abdullah he's close with Callum. And that um, Abdullah owns it, and he's like loves bodybuilding, just fucking lives and breathes it. Um, doesn't really compete himself. Coaches, really knowledgeable guy. Um, but he's like really hand picked all the equipment, mm. so everything is just fucking perfect, man. And but like, so when I was going there, there was no one really going there. I was training on my own, and then when I left, everyone started like you know, like some like good lads started to go there, you know, because I used to go to Benus and. I used to train Marissa and then. I remember I tried to do like a hamstring session there. I swear down I couldn't train because it was like, oh, you're right, Jay, how you doing? Because people haven't seen me for ages because I was in dungeon for so long. So every time I go back to the boot, the Benus, everyone want to fucking chat, you know? It's a weird I just want to train. Like, yeah, like, I have it as well where my clients would be in the gym. Obviously, you, where, we, where we're from, Jay, Preston, it's a fucking tiny little town. So everybody yeah. knows you and everybody's like, how's your prep, bro? How's your prep, bro? How's your prep, bro? Oh, fucking hell, bro. Can you just update my diet, bro? And he's like, you just let me fucking train when you're yeah, off, like mind it, but when you're prepping, yeah, definitely get that. Oh, yeah, it. but the thing is, like, isn't it crazy? Because when you're off season, you don't mind it, right? And I'm the same when you're prepping. I feel like as soon as I start prep, I need to go isolate myself and be in an isolated gym. I get, almost do that, like, I get anxiety. I wish I could have that mindset. Yeah, I wish, but I wish I could just keep the off season mindset and just tick all the boxes in prep. Do you not think that's because yeah. so, like, I've got to win? And, and that's not just because we want to win. It's because the external pressure of people being like, don't fucking flop. Like, you said you were going to yeah. do this. Or you, you, people, like, expect us to do so much. You think, or like, now you're a pro. Like, fucking, yeah, but he won't do anything as a pro. And you think, fuck, say, like, I've got to fucking level up here. Isn't it? Yeah, and I, and, and I think as well, like, as bad as it sounds, like, I, I, I'm in that mindset where, where when I prep now, I'm like, right, I've got a fucking... I've got to nail it because if I don't nail it, everyone thinks I'm like I'm a has been because yeah, yeah, when I turned pro, when I turned pro, everyone was like, oh, like I remember being on fucking before I did Alicante, like being on like bodybuilding, um, desktop bodybuilding and being like the dark horse, like, oh, he can qualify for Olympia. I placed like ninth, you know, because like I just looked like shit because I just way o- went way OTT trying to um, dry out. And then like the next year, it was like, Everything was really smooth in 2021 when we were in the Arnolds. And then, um, you know, that's when I prepped Rob. That's when I had Elton. And everything was going so well. I was full as a house. And then I obviously got divorced. And then fucking six weeks later, the divorce hit me, you know? And I was like, what the fuck? I think I was actually about the same time I was in the Arnolds. Yeah, I think as well, was it not like you ended up on your own again? Everybody had finished prep and you were And I I was on my own. I think I was texting you. I was literally like asking, "Are you all right, bro?" Like, because I know yeah, what- I was in a bad yeah. fucking place, man. Yeah, yeah like, and I, it was yeah. weird because, like, then I start like it, it was only about six weeks, eight weeks later after I got divorced, and that, like you said, after everyone left and um, like wasn't in Dubai, and then I was on my own. I was like, "Fuck, I've not been on my own for like fucking eight years." <laughs> I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. "This is this is fucking different," you know. I'm not used to this shit. And then I kind of got myself out of that rut. I actually did Romania that year because I was like, again, I remember that was the same year, that year I was like, if I don't compete, 
if I don't do this show, I'm not going to compete. And I remember my weight, bro, my weight when I come back from the Arnold's was 217. And I was like, right, I'm on the money. And then about a week later, it hit me. And I just see my weight go like this. And it yeah, changed no, nothing. You yeah, you text me about it. And then I, I, was, think, I went to... Did it see you went up to two, your diuretics? Well, no, I went up to 229. And I was like, how the fuck have I gone from 217 to 229? And it was just stress. Yeah, yeah, it was just pure. Yeah, I think stress. it wasn't that. Um, wasn't that the time in life when you started just fucking blowing money as well, trying to find yeah, happiness so was, through money? Well, yeah, that. So that it was. It, that was no. That was um, twenty. Yeah, that was that was twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that I was. Um, yeah, twenty twenty one, and I, I just fucking. Was that twenty twenty one? Twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty one. So I had that, and then I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna do Romania. Oh, no, this was 2020, I think. No, it wasn't. I don't know. 2021. 2021. Yeah, so I, think, I said, fuck it. I'm just going to message Chris and be like, can I be ready for Romania? Because if I don't message someone, I'm just going to pull the fucking plug on prep because I was just like, my, my head's in a mess. I can't fucking do, like, I can't stay on track unless I've got a goal. So I messaged him. I was like, hey, Chris, I'm 229. Do you think you can get me ready in two weeks? And he was like, it was like 10 <laughs> days. I don't think it was two weeks. It was like 10 days. And he was like, yeah, you can be ready. So I was like, okay, fuck it, let's do the show. So I did the show. Um, and I remember, <laughs> I think uh, I was just on like white fish and fucking asparagus. Yeah. And I went you from went like... To Gemma. You went to, with Gemma to the show? Yeah, yeah. And I went I went from 229 to like fucking 208 or something in like seven, eight days or seven <laughs> days or something. Because like, the weigh was on the Friday. So, and then I did the show and I remember even standing, well, I was in my sister backstage, you know, I, I was like, I don't even want to do this show. I was like, I can't even be asked pumping up. I didn't pump up, mate, because I just I just was like trying to pump up and I just couldn't get a pump. I was like, fuck this. Jim was like, what's wrong with you? So I'm not going to make third, fourth call out of you. And she was like, no, you're fine. You will do. I remember just standing in the lineup and they, I, I got, they called my number for second call out and put in the centre, and I was like, oh, actually, like, that's not that bad, considering the situation, you know what I mean? Um, but, like, after that, again, it was just, like, that fucking, everything was going so well, and then it comes to the show, and it was just, like, a flop. And then that's when, the 2022, I was like, right, I'm going to change my whole way of thinking, where everything, I'm going to just try go back to where I started, and see if that can kind of, like, Is that bring me out of this that's when I went to Wales and then that prep was a flop <laughs> you know what I mean so it's just like do you not think because like, like, I think it was the same thing when you went to Wales because you had Mike and Lisa around you all the time it wasn't yeah. too bad like I don't think you you was actually quite happy weren't you quite content yeah I was content but I think I was still learning in that transition how to be alone you know because hmm. I did a lot of like I, it might sound like cheesy, but I did a lot of like soul searching. Like fucking hell, I went to Canada. Remember after Alicante, Chris? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Kieran. yeah. And I remember I booked that flight because remember I was gonna go to Miami, but I couldn't get my visa. So I remember on the wet, on, we landed on Tuesday, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go Canada tomorrow." And I just flew to Canada, like with one, because yeah. I had all my suitcase packed. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to go, but I'm going to go away for like six weeks just to try like figure my shit out, you know? And that's when I went to Canada. And I went to Canada for like six weeks. And then when I came back, I was like, right, I think I'm going to go to to Wales and just kind of prep there and just see what that is like. And yeah, that didn't really go as planned. Um, but that again, was, like that everything... Was legal. That was the... Because you sent me pictures probably like three weeks out maybe. And it was yeah. exactly the same scenario of like same scenario, bro. Yeah, same people. scenario. But can you, the peak. Can you make do you think you could make the 212 weight without having to try and peak? Honestly, like like for example, this year gave me like a glimpse and a little bit of like hope because I was 216 and I'd never been so full at 216 with striations in my glutes. What and I was not on look. Um honestly, the Cycle was very. I'd use no orals at all, right. um, because I was having a lot of like I don't know about you, but over the years my stomach seems to be getting worse when I try putting orals. And I don't know if it's just the brand of orals I've been was using. Yeah, I because back in the day, 
back in the day, I had no issues, but I, I, I mean, the stuff that I used in was like tested, so I know it was good, but the orals were just fucking my stomach up. Well, at the time, I didn't know what it was, you know? Um, but then for this last prep, I didn't use any orals, but I, um, it was, it was just a strange one. Like I started prep like four Texas, 10 weeks out, but I actually, I was doing like my own thing and I was kind of like, I was doing my own thing, but I was kind of in that mindset where I was like, I, I kept putting my show back, you know? Yeah. yeah. Cause like, I, cause like I realistically, I'll be honest. I don't think I really wanted to compete. No, you just, so yeah. I just be like, I'll be like, okay, I'll do like Chicago in five weeks. And I was like, actually, no, I'm going to do Tampa. And then, and then it comes to a point and I actually spoke to Joe and he was like, right, we're doing Texas. I was like, okay, that gives me some accountability. I have to fucking like, well, do, do that now. Like, do you feel like you somewhat compete because you're expected to compete? Yeah, partly, 100%. Yeah. You feel like, I, like it's like, or sometimes I feel like I'm that invested and we've done that long, like we've been in bodybuilding this hard for that long, that it'd be a waste if I stopped now. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, obviously, if you stop, you're always like, oh, but what if I carried on? Would I have made it to Olympia? You know what I mean? So, there's, And there's always that thing in the back of your head. That regret. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to live with any regret, you know? So this is why, like, I was like, right, I'm going to start off doing Texas. And I was like, look, I know I'm not going to win Texas because Keon's doing Texas, you know? So I was like, I'm not going to win. But... Might, might have got him on a back double. <laughs> so I was like, I know I'm not going to win, but I was like, you know what? If I can bring something that I'm, I'm happy that I, I I look at myself and I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking happy. That was my goal this year, yeah. you know? Um, but prep was really fucking smooth from, like, I had a really bad start. Like, when I got here, um, I fucking bruised both my ribs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking on a belt squat. Oh, my God, I stacked this belt squat and I had a fucking corset on and the belt had dug into my ribs so fucking much. I woke up the next day, I swear down, I could not like get myself out of bed. It felt like I'd just been in fucking in in the UFC cage with John Jones, just getting really? the fuck kicked out of me in my ribs. I swear, you might have to get tie boxing, isn't it? Forget I that. swear, bro, it was one of the most painful things I've had to do- deal with because, like, I couldn't like bend down, I couldn't do anything. Anyway, I ended up bruising both my ribs. It took about two and a half weeks to go, and then after that, I fucking dropped a dumbbell on my foot. No, so no. I was like fucking hobbling. This is this is like the start of my prep. Then I went to Miami and um, Virginia for Marissa's shows, and I, I was just really stressed from all the travel and stuff, and it just didn't go good. Good. And then when I got back, I was ten weeks out, so I was like, right, I'm gonna start prep properly. Like Joe's gonna oversee it, and then everything just went really fucking smooth for. It was probably eleven weeks out, so everyone went really smooth until like obviously this operation. So it's, it's probably the smoothest five weeks of prep that's ever ever went down. I went from like I think I started at like two thirty three, I was two sixteen by the end of it. And I was like I said, I was just full as a fucking house. Mm-hmm. Um and again it's like I learned a lot. I wish I could have finished that prep because obviously the show was last week. I learned a lot about like the prep and everything. Um and my but I learned a little bit more about your body, which you do every single prep, you know. Mm-hmm. But um honestly I don't think I was happy prepping. Like I didn't enjoy it. I just did it because I felt like you said, like I needed to do it and I made a commitment to step on stage. So I was like, I'm obliged yeah. to do this, you know, but whether do I really enjoy the prep? Like even Marissa was like, I don't think you're enjoying this prep. And I'm like, I'm not enjoying it because I'm thinking so much about it. I'm trying to like, like, I'm just, you, you just get into that mindset where you just can't get out of it, you know? And again, it's like you say, because that added pressure and, that sort of expectation that you put on yourself and everybody else puts on you, and you think, fucking hell, I can't, I can't flop or I can't fucking look bad because it's going to be exposed. It, it does, it just plays on your mind. You think, I just think, I can't, I don't want to fucking do it. It takes all the yeah, that, out of it. A hundred percent. And then the other side is like, oh, I've got to come back better because last year I flopped. So now I've got to make a point, you know? And then yeah. like that alone is pressure, you know? And it's even like now, like I'm like, now I'm like, oh, I've had this injury, but everyone's like, I'm. I know there's people out there who'd be like, "Oh, well, bodybuilding's done for him now. He's fucked. He's fucked his arm." You know, like I know that's what people will say. Do you think sometimes, bro? Though, like, we it's weird because we never used to give a fuck about what anyone thought. No, like if someone said that, you prove them wrong. Yeah, you just <laughs> you know like, what I mean? don't actually give a fuck. But it's weird. Like now, over time, it, it started to like. I think as soon as you get this weird, but as soon as you got a pro card, 
and you know that it's like you're on this. Pe- it's almost like you're on a pedestal to be shot. Oh yeah, yeah. And like- as well, like you got so much attention on you. Like you know, for a fact, if you do really well on a show, you've got to have like fucking MD on you, uh, muscle development on you, like on you. You're gonna have fucking RX muscle say. You know what I mean? It's like you're on that pedestal now. So it's like you have. It's almost like that's a, alone is the commitment to to turn up and compete. Otherwise, you're gonna get criticized. Yeah, well, and it's like you said, like back in the day, you didn't give a fuck. You just you just turn up. Yeah, you, you know like I mean? I, me and Kieran saying about when I did the bolt and I just turned up. I know it was a bolt, yeah. but it's like you just went and did it. It's like, oh, they've got any tan? Like, yeah, fuck it, let's just do yeah. it. Uh, I remember Man, that I show. Uh, five, five I tanned you in the morning. For that show. <laughs> I tanned you in the morning for that show, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, man. We just was like, yeah. oh, fuck it, let's do it. But it's um, yeah, even down to like the training. Like, let's touch on like the new school of say coaching. It's all yeah. become very much like. It has to be this. It has to be optimal. It has to be, you're not going to make the maximum amount of progress. When did it go to that? Remember, right? I always remember, bro. You probably remember it. Remember when we did them Swift machine squats, right? Oh, and we just went back to back and you did like one set and then I tried to beat you and then you do another set. And we probably did about 22 sets. Yeah, like, we did. <laughs> it was I crazy. But... Yeah, I wouldn't quit. Yeah. You wouldn't quit. But it was fun. Yeah, it was. It was just like back then, man, them leg sessions we used to have, we used to fucking like just go all out and, and like just go hard. Now, this is where like I do like part, like I do, I couldn't train like that now. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying it, it still has to be fun. It yeah, 100%. Can't be so regimented like, oh, you need to do a lower lap pull down because you're lower lap. And it's like, it's become so much like, this has to be yeah. timed, that has to be timed. So many grams of salt, and even though I do it all, I get to a point where I'm like, really? Like, that's fucking- I mean, sometimes I've done that new school approach before, and I'm like, I look worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm yeah. like, this yeah. is. I don't look the same. Like, I, look, I look worse than I did last time. I, but I, like we kind of touched upon earlier, and I'm not like trying to say all oh, drugs is the answer, but nowadays the 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 dosage is just us. So, um, not low, but like everything's like kind of like over analyzed. Yeah, yeah and people are scared to take it. Yeah, because they're scared of what people will say. Because now the science is out, and all the everyone's spouting science at people. You shouldn't do this because of this, and you should do this because of this. So people are now scared to be like, "Well, this is what I actually do." In case they get criticized for doing it, rather than yeah, going, well- forget about what I do. And as well, on a coaching stance, we're so exposed now that we also have to be very careful. Yeah, bro. Like, do you remember like back in the day, like you didn't even get an explanation why it was just like, yeah, there's there's your fucking WhatsApp. That's what you're doing, and you didn't even dare ask. He was like, sweet, because you didn't want to look like being a fucking bitch. He was like, I don't know why, but we'll just. (laughs) Do you remember when Chris Chris messaged the email? He was like, bro, what does that say? I don't even know what that says. Like, yeah, yeah. It was meant for me, and I was like, I don't know what that's. It's funny actually because uh, the last time I spoke to Chris was the start of this year, and I was asking about DHB, and he was like, "What's DHB?" <laughs> I'm like, Chris is, he doesn't know what DHB is, you well, know. And it's crazy, but the thing is, all those guys, like, look at the top guys in the Olympia. I'm telling you now, like, none of them are fucking like over analyzing every single aspect, you know what I mean? They're all just doing the old school shit, chicken and rice. They're, that they, that's well, the reality. Like, me and Kieran has this discussion about coaching. It's like it's a passion and it has to be intuition. It's not like, oh, it's it, this and this does this and this. It's like, why have you done that? You're like, I just know it's that's the answer. You don't you can't yeah. really explain like why it's the answer. You're like, I've just done this that many times that I just know that's gonna work. I mean, twenty like for me, like twenty twenty two was a very like scientifical approach, and I looked the worst I've ever looked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Or oh, Tom. Tom. No, yeah, but I mean, like, like I love Tom to bits. I don't like want to chat shit. Like it was good. It was like a learning curve for me and probably for him as well. But that was definitely the most science based approach that I'd used, and in my opinion, I looked the worst I looked. Well, bro, we used, that's, to that's, joke. Yeah. we used to always joke, didn't we, saying, like, the book will say one thing and the body will just mm. laugh, and it's like, now what are you going to do? Yeah, and I, I don't yeah. think – I think that was a combination of, like, everything, like, training, um, like, diet, supplementation, probably, like, a lot of my 
own was probably I should have like given more feedback on my own. What's that, what's like, happened to you stance. there, Jay? Is because you, because you're not used to all that the scientificness and the structure. So you you listen to your body a lot more. Now he's coming to tell you exactly what to do. Your body just yeah. stressed the fuck and not responded well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like Tom's a great coach. Like he's put out fucking tons of um, like good results with loads of guys, and his approach clearly works for loads of people. I think I, on my behalf, I probably should have like I, I kind of should have um, given more input. You know, that's where, and I believe that's why a lot of the way I looked was a lot of my fault because I didn't really give my input on things. I was like, you know, let let me just let someone take the reins, and I'll just listen. Yeah, yeah. Do you find? I find it so different to peak in pros than it is to peak amateurs because amateurs can be five to ten percent off and still win, but in pros you can't yeah. afford to be that five percent off. Yeah, it's like in the amateurs, it's like condition is king, or someone's shape will carry them through. This is what I said. I said for me, I used to win on shape, structure, lines, like, and you could even be on a conditioning. In the pros, everyone's got that. You cannot yeah, be it's off. So that. It's trying to create a full condition look, which is. The hard part because a lot of these guys are just pushing so much conditioning that they don't look like they don't push fullness, you know, they don't maintain fullness because it's like it's almost like you're bringing them in so lean because of that's what not what they know, but that's like the safe option. It's like, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, it's oh, I'm shredded, so um, yeah, exactly. You gotta be shredded and peeled, and, and that's the hard comp. It's the finding a nice balance, like, there's no point like pushing to get the glutes absolutely peeled if you are sacrificing so much brownness and fullness from, like, your upper. Like, there's no point trying to dig your glutes out and then lose your fucking chest and delts. Yeah, because you know? everyone's yeah. got striated glutes. Yeah, because, like, people are going to have straight glutes and people are also going to have fucking big-ass arms and chest and delts, you know? So yeah, you're trying to find yeah. the balance. And, like, I, th this is honestly, like, why, like, I don't like to like fucking blow my own trumpet. This is why I think I'm so good at peaking people because I've fucked up so many times and gone way OTT. So I know the limits. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like yeah. I know the limits on like genetics. I know the limits on like, like carb loading. Like I remember when I did Vancouver last year, I fucking just was like, right. I was like, I look like shit. So like, cause I, my legs are already gone. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to see how much I can load and how much fullness I can get. So I know the extremes of both. And then when, like, you know, I did Alicante, we, we kind of really pushed the drag side way too much that it, it left me, like, way beyond flat, you know? That also looked like I'd regressed about two years. So it's knowing the balance, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think just, um, like, working with some of, like, the top like old school guys in the industry, like I'll be honest, I've not really worked with many new school, but I've worked with, you know, in the past, I worked with Aceto, Fakiri, uh, even like Mios for a little bit, you yeah. know. Uh, but I was uh, thinking about them guys, like that's all off intuition. It's not. And it's all old school, man. Like it's old school. Mm -hmm. Like there is no new school in there. Like Aceto's still one of the best coaches I've ever worked with and it's very, very, like you said, it's much intuition. Remember that like, time, Jay? Remember that time when you was like, when are we going to change over to like, like short acting? He was like, oh, have we not added that in yet? And you're like, no. He's like, oh, you're yeah. Good. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> same. He's like, he always used to say to me, oh, you don't need, you don't need, um, like if, it, if it's working, don't fix it. I remember like, going into when I turned pro in my pro show, uh, my pro debut, he had me eating like a muffin every day and I was like, uh, he was like, oh, you look better today. Let's just keep it the same. And then I'd, I'd do the same day and he'd be like, oh, you look better today. Just keep it the same. I ate muffins for like three or four weeks straight every pre-workout, you know? Yeah. And I remember when I fucking finished the show, uh, I finished, um, I, I turned pro, I finished the show. I said, oh, Chris, I'm going to go out and like take my friends and family out like for food. And I went and had like fucking sushi. I had like six rolls of sushi. I had that Lotus French toast in Dubai. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. And then I woke up the next day, sent him pictures, and he was like, look really good here. Do the same menu today. I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, the same exact thing you ate last night. So I wrote it out for him. I was like, you mean this? He was like, yep. So I did it again. I woke up the next day, and he was like, oh, you look better. He was like, do it again. I was like, fucking hell. Fuck I did three days, in a, three days in a row of sushi and French toast. <laughs> wow. I don't even know. Like, and I just looked better. So it was just like 
it was very like like you said intuition and it's like yeah, like, like no I do with like there. Yeah. no science no, well, whatsoever not at all and as well like it's like when I like you know like like when some clients will say oh what's the plan for Pete week I'm like I don't, I literally reply say I have no fucking idea yeah, I've said it to you could I said to you Kieran a few times I've like you like yeah. like what's the plan today I'm like I don't know just send me pictures in the morning we'll just look at you. And it can even and even down to it can change yeah. fucking morning to post workout. You're like, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we we need this, and this is what. Um, obviously, I've seen you peak, Kieran. Obviously, for the last couple of shows, and Kieran peaking, obviously the classic guys, and um, that laid back approach and not having everything like on a chart and everything detailed, just going purely off look and meal by meal is how it has to be. It can't be. 100%. You need this amount of salt because this and this amount. It's like no man. It's got to just like every peak's different. Every yeah, peak's yeah. Different. I messaged you, didn't I, Jay? I messaged you, Jay, didn't I say, mate? I've just used the same peaking protocols that you do with me on these guys, and they've turned up to every show. The leanest there, full as a fucking house, and they're all winning. Yeah. Because you know what? Like I hate when people start to play with sodium and water because you've prepped on the exact same thing or the like my approach is I, I, and I understand everyone's different and that's when I'd adjust certain things. But my approach is keep all the basics the same and use a small amount of direct to pull the water off. And that's it. Like yeah. you could, like you can manipulate salt and water, but do one or the other. If you're going to manipulate loads of salt and water, I would probably say shy away from directs. Mm. If you're going to just keep everything the same, but you're going to load like my my whole philosophy is like if I'm trying to peak someone, I'm trying to use the water to fucking pull the water from the mu- from uh, between the skin and the muscle, and then push the carbs. You know what I mean? Yeah, and push yeah. the sugars and use some fats for the fullness to stick. And it's almost like fill and spill. So spill them a little bit over directly, and yeah. then go again. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. That's how I see it. But that's what people just, as well is they don't dare uh, the whole thing of like, oh, you shouldn't have a five guys a night before. So like if you don't, you'll be flat as fuck. Like if you if you don't have like a, a higher meal when you need it, and then you put in fucking quarter of a diazide or half a diazide, you'll wake up flat, and you can't get that. Oh, yeah, you can't get it back. Hundred percent, you can't yeah. get it back. And then you've got to also understand that like you know certain body types, like can go harder. Like for example, with someone like Elton, I was always able to really dry him out hard because he didn't lose any fullness. Yeah, yeah. But with someone like with someone who was uh, like say absolutely peeled really dry, grainy, they're more likely to kind of lose the pot, and you know, if the muscles are down around. dependent as well. Yeah, exactly. It's all like, it all matters. And I don't know, I just think like, when you start to play with like, I, I honestly feel like you have more control when you use a drag very sparingly than you do when you start to manipulate sodium and water. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think maybe that's just because I have so much more experience with that way of doing it and fucking up that way. I just think it's more... But it's like, I can use like... um, Am I on? Yeah, you're on. I can use like um, a quarter or a half of a diazide with someone and then see how they look after another meal. And I can be like, okay, it's going to flatten out a little bit. Okay, just let's like bump some more food up. Let's push a little bit more carbs. Let's have a little bit more fat to let it stick, you know? I can do that, but when I'm, like, manipulating sodium and water, it's like, you just really don't know how, unless you've done it all prep, you know? Which you're not going to start manipulating sodium and water in a prep. 100%. So, I think, I just think, like... I think the other side of it is, if someone is not fat-free, none of it's going to work. True, but then I've also seen Chris... I've also seen Chris get people who look, like, two weeks out absolutely diced really uh yeah uh, on stage like a few times just from drying them out so wow. hard you know Fuck. yeah i suppose yeah. again, again like, that comes with experience doesn't it experience and intuition man um yeah. but yeah like I, I just think the new school approach is very very complicated like very very complicated um and the pd side is i'm not saying it's a bad thing to be very reserved but i feel like it's too reserved you know? I think that yeah. is definitely because it's like remember Jay, right? We never even really discussed Primo, did we? Like back in the day, like for like we had Primo maybe the last five weeks max of a prep. Yeah. Like, but before that, in an off season, it was like fuck it, test EQ, like some some MPP or whatever it was. But that shit works. And it's like it was 
it was literally what you said. It was testy Q off season. And then prep, it was like, then you start bringing in. And and the thing is, then you start bringing in, like, you start prep, you'd be like test, mast. And then you'd start bringing in, like, trend. But you'd always go to, like, a pro. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was always yeah, fast end, yeah. testers. Was like, yeah, right <laughs> at the end, you know? Um, I don't know. It's just, like, it all made sense. And now, obviously, say, oh, esters don't really matter. And I agree with some of that to a certain extent. Like, for example... I've used like master on nth in a prep and I saw no difference between a prop and eight, but then I still feel like I see a difference between a test sip and a sus. 100. Yeah. 100%. You know, right. like I always try yeah. to use sus yeah. all the time. If the moment I start to use a sip and eight or an amphate, I don't know. I just feel like I hold more water. Yeah. You know, I, I use sus thing, all like, the time. Yeah. And no, this is the thing is, this is why like, I totally agree that certain body types react different. Like I, what? I like, and there What's is the all this science AI? based. What's your thoughts? Um, obviously, like any type of uh, AI is going to be fucking bad for cholesterol. But, but, then, but then I've noticed that. I, I, I totally primo, believe it. A gram of Primo is fucking bad for cholesterol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But the thing is, they're just the people are trying to create a healthier way. Like, I use AIs, bro. Like, um, like Kieran will know, like I, I'm a pretty big believer on increasing the eyes as you get close to a show to help dry you out. I've you always done that. We've always done that's that. That's the old way. Um, yeah, are they harsh on the cholesterol? Yes, but can we get our yeah, cholesterol but, back in check yeah. if we're smart after a, a show in a health phase? Yes. To, I mean, to, to I've, point on that, though, I remember... yeah, I've just come out of a long season, yeah? Uh, orals were high, everything, you know, we, we pushed as we should. And I just had my blood work done three days after the show, and it's pretty I mean, respectful. Well, this is the thing. Like, so I did the same thing here, and I ran pretty much AIs daily um, towards the Arnold's and the Vancouver show. And then I did my blood work, I think, four or five weeks later after, like, really putting an extensive health protocol together. And my cholesterol was the best I ever had. All my, my HDL-LDL ratios were in range. The only thing that was slightly out was my HDL was a little bit low, but my total cholesterol HDL to LDL range was in range. I've, because I've, at the end of the day, if you... Like the yeah. would work. Like, I've never seen anybody who takes gear to be, like, perfect uh, HDL. It's so hard. Well, unless they're, like, you know, anonymous, you know? But I feel like if you're... Yeah. I, I, I'm not against, like, pushing, like, AIs and all that. Um, if you're very, very aware of the supplementations that are needed to create good blood work. But like what, you know, what, yeah. This is what I'm saying. Like at the top level, it's like it, it's almost like being demonized as like, oh well, yeah, but we could use Masteron and we could use Primo. And I'll be honest with you, I've done it, and it, fuck, the results are not there. Like, it, yeah, compared, like, compared to the the actual results that you get from like EQ MPP, like you know, I'm mean, doing the cycles that we would we would normally run. Yeah, like honestly, like in my opinion, like. Test in the, over the last few years has been massively underutilized. Like I'm a big believer in running a higher amount of test, 100%. and then a moderate amount of everything else because test is what controls fullness, and it's probably one of the safest drugs we can use in terms of toxicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like and, remember, and, we, used run, we always used to run like 750 tests, and I remember like fact put us up like to a gram of test. Yeah, bro. I, I most of my amateur time. A CEO would always have me on around a thousand, and then everything else would be really moderate. Yeah, and I think and we so close, just... to last, close to the last show, Mo, um, Mo's a big boy in Iran, like what nineteen yeah, stone or something. For whatever reason, he was put down to three hundred milligram of test per week, and like fuck, could he fill out? He had four or five guys in a day, could, just could not fill out. His test just wasn't enough. So it's like this prep, the way I did it is I actually tapered my test up as I got closer to the show, but I kept everything yeah. else really moderate, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would yeah. use tests to keep the fullness. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, so I would start, I started at like 750 and then I went up as I started to not lose fullness, but as I started to get deeper in prep, I would use that to drive more fullness. And I swear down, I was bursting because I was like, even my partner, she was like, oh, I was like, how'd you, how'd you feel? So I was like, I feel fucked. Like, I'm tired. Like, I'm dragging my ass. I was like, but I'm 216 and I'm full as a house, so I don't need to refeed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. it more often um, will look than actual, like, how you feel. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I was like, I'm absolutely bursting, you know? And there's not one point in that prep that I didn't flatten out, but I did use tests as my main way to drive fullness. What's um, the thing about the yeah. Like the, this all like fatigue management, like um, let's make, I just feel at the minute people are going like, we need to. It's OTT. Yeah, we need to look at fatigue. Like if, if this is going to happen, and your body's not going to lose any body fat if you're not like if you're overtraining, if you're not sleeping. I, I kind of agree, but like, bro, look at the guys that are fucking forever. Like we all know, you get so far into prep, you're not sleeping. We all know, yeah. like you just yeah. train like a madman. Yeah, you're not going to go absolutely fucking nuts like we used to, but you're still going to work really fucking hard, mate. How much cardio have we done in the past? We've done like. Fucking two hours when we're amateurs sometimes. Well, I was this prep I was doing 80 minutes a day. Yeah, but do you not think people are now, oh god, yeah, but um fatigue management, I, I can't be doing two hours. Yeah. But you know what it you know what it is because it makes for a great reel. <laughs> and that's the reality. Yeah. It makes for a great reel and it makes people sound fucking smart. And that's it. Yeah. And then people yeah. buy into these fancy big words. And that's yeah. the reality. Like, like then, when someone starts talking about fatigue management and starts talking about oh uh, like E2 estrogen and all that sort of shit. Like they've used all these big words and they fucking, they put it on a reel and they're talking to like their audience and their audience like, this guy knows what he's on about. But reality is they ain't fucking even been peeled. So they don't yeah. know what they're on about. Yeah. They're just reading off a book. Um, like, do I believe that overtraining exists? I definitely do after um, training the way I used to train and train the way I train now. From like and I think... Two-a-days. You used to do two-a-days, didn't you? Yeah, like, I used to do two-a-days. It's strange, because I used to do two-a-days, and I've had two-a-days where I felt fucking, like, the crazy fullness. And I still believe two-a-days can be beneficial if you can recover from it. But obviously, I think as you get older, you have to kind of be a little bit smarter with your training. Mm -hmm. um, you and then also... As you get stronger. Yeah, because that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, the way I train now is still like to failure and very intense, but I've definitely knocked my volume down a lot because to manage my, the way that my recovery, you know, because I was doing like, I remember I'd finished legs, right. And my, if I train legs at fucking 10 AM, I never, let's say after one meal, say at 12, right. If I train legs, there was no way that I was moving from the sofa after leg day. No. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, like now, this this prep that I was a, a lot more attentive on, like working sets and um, warm up sets. Because, like back in the day, I would do like four working sets all the time, and I'd go like fucking balls out, you know. But now I'm like doing two working sets all out, and I definitely saw a a, a bigger. Like my legs never, my legs like didn't fade once this prep. They were just like full as a house. Mm. Yeah. Um. But I, again, I do think it's specific because, like, I mean, I used to train my legs like hard as fuck, man. Like all out drop sets, supersets, you know, two hour leg sessions, and my legs faded. You know you what know, I mean? I think as well. What I've noticed is training a body part, training different body parts in different manners. For example, like my back. Like, I need to do higher volume and more sets because I don't connect that well with it. But my leg, yeah. I can probably get away with doing 10 sets in a whole session because I'm yeah. doing them straight away. So when I do my back and I do 10 to 12 sets, I don't feel fuck up. But then if I do and, 20 sets, I then I feel my back. And this is exactly like um, why it's so – training, I believe, is so, so specific to an individual. And it's like – even like with you, Kieran, like now it's like like what you said there, you've got to train your back in different styles. So with Kieran's setup, he has a heavy leg day and then he has a high rep leg day, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So we're getting both fibers, we're getting fast twitch, slow twitch fibers, everything. And I believe that that's when training is very, very specific. And then from there, you've got to manage the, like manage the recovery. But honestly, I think like two days a, two days a week is enough to recover. I think overtraining would come when you were doing a seven day a week split, you know, and not having any rest days. Yeah, and I've yeah, been there and done that before. But I mean, even like yeah. last off season, I was doing three days on one day off, two days on one day off, you know, yeah, and a seven day. Yeah, and right. it's like now I'm, I'm, I'm now mine's going to be like a nine day rotation. Um, and I'll probably do like two days on one day off, two days on one day off, two days on one day off, because 
I still feel like I need to bring my legs up to match my upper. So if I keep training my upper with the same volume, it's just going to get bigger. Yeah. Because I don't know if you know, back in the day, like my legs were probably more overpowering than my upper body, but now it's kind of switched. Yeah. You know, so it's like now I kind of need to bring um, my sort of hamstrings and adductors up. So it's like, right, okay, let's focus on my legs being a priority now. And then my upper, I'm just keeping there, you know? Mm-hmm. When are you, yeah. to, are you going back to Dubai soon? So I think the plan is to go to the UK for two weeks. Well, I don't really know because it just depends on what happens with clients and people competing. So I might go to Dubai for Dubai Pro after Spain. And if I don't, then I'm going to stay till October and then go to Dubai after that. Are you going to stay in Dubai? We all need to be. Hey, go on. Uh, what is it, I say so. We need to hook up week after next, all of us. That's when. That's yeah, so the only week I'm back is. on the. I'm back on the fourth, so I think the, the no the fifth. I think the Tuesday, but I'm there from Tuesday to the following Wednesday, so I'm there for like eight days. Yeah, we'll yeah. I go away on the Sunday, so we're getting that week. Yeah, yeah one of the so questions we'll people ask me is, are you and Jamie ever going to train against the other? I was like, nah. Yeah, so we'll get. <laughs> I was like, nah, fucking. No, I'm joking. We'll get a session. Um, yeah, we'll all get a session in when we're there, like something like that. Do you think, um, like what are you thinking about ever moving to America? Are you gonna, can you move to America with your visa or not? Uh, so my visa at the moment is six months. Visa, I can stay for six months at a time for 10 years. So I've got like, I can just literally come every, whenever I want. I can just stay six months. But like, I don't know. It's hard to say because um, obviously Marissa, she's from here. And long term obviously we'd have to try to figure something out but after being here for so long I don't know if I could see myself being here for a long time right now but then things change as we get I don't think I can see myself being in San Diego I think well, like I Vegas is somewhere where I could probably be um, so we've like kind of spoke too quiet or what's it's just very very quiet man yeah very quiet yeah especially if you come from Dubai where it's fucking hectic and it's weird because yeah. like when I first came here, I thought oh, it'd be nice being in this sort of quiet place and like not as much going on. But then you're kind of like so used to that having everything on your doorstep. I feel like Vegas would be a really good like place to stay, and it's cheap, man. Vegas is so cheap here; it's just ridiculous. Is it expensive? Yeah. Yeah. We we pay so we've got a two bedroom apartment, and it's not big, and we pay fucking three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Mine so Jeez. yeah. That's like free, free. Like you need free to get in a better time zone. You need to Mate, get in a better time zone. So I got to go five a.m. for me check-ins, bro. <laughs> well, that's why I've actually. The funny thing was, is I actually started staying up till like two a.m. now and getting up yeah. at like ten, eleven because I'm trying to get into the time zone that's best for like clients. You know, it works better when you're in Dubai, doesn't it? Because your head. It works amazing in Dubai because I'm ahead. So like, I literally like you can be so on it with everyone. Yeah, like I now, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get like to bed at like two, three a.m. So I get everyone's check-ins at like seven, eight, nine, and then at least I'm able to reply straight away rather than go to bed at fucking ten and then have to reply to everyone like twelve hours later, which I really hate doing. You yeah. know? Yeah. The thing is as well, you know, if you're on prep and guys are on prep, that even though nothing will probably change, it's just that sort of reassurance and just like yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We'll um. So. Yeah. So that's uh. That's basically what I'm trying to do. But I'm looking forward to going back to Dubai, man. I just, for me, it's like home and I'm just yeah, used to the lifestyle. Like, what, five years now, six years? It's 2018. So, yeah, five years. Yeah. You know what I mean, so for me, it's just, it's just home, man. Um, yeah. Obviously, I've got the dog there and all that. So it's just like, it sounds bad, but it's just a fucking easy life. Like, you, yeah, you know, I got, yeah. I got my maid that does everything. You know, I've got like, the house. I mean, that's the crazy thing. I got a six bedroom villa in Dubai, and I pay, we pay three thousand seven hundred here. I pay two thousand a month in Dubai, just over like two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. You know? Wow. Well, yeah. So it's like yeah. this is a two bedroom. What you I pay three. For over there, bro, is fucking mental as well, isn't it? Like, What's that? What you get your money for over there, like here, like fucking yeah. Here, it's... But we live. It's like. Couple of grand gets you fuck all. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, like because like I feel like everywhere I am in the world is kind of like the same wherever I am, but it's just in different things, mm. you know. 
like for example in Dubai, like I, I think you spend so much money in Dubai because everything's at your doorstep. You have so much accessibility to just oh, let's just go out for sashimi tonight. Like there's a place down the road, you know. Let's just I go. Mean, it's just massively. It's like trying to stay. Like I chatted to Ben Bray. Um, obviously he's moved on to Dubai, and he. And I was like, why are you back in the UK? And he was like, because I can't prep in Dubai because I just go out all the time. Like it, he, find yeah. it, he finds it hard to have that balance, you know, like, because it's paradise, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, like, and, and like, that's the thing, like, you can kind of, but the great thing is with it is, like, you can still really be on point and go out and enjoy absolutely everything. But it's yeah, just that, that mindset. Nice. Like, I, I find it easy to do that, you know, but I can understand other people find it, like, really hard and that's when they start to rebel against a diet. But, I mean, for me, it's just I feel like I can go to, like, I remember, like I said, like, back in the day, I used to go to, like, the beach clubs, like, chill by the beach on a re- beach club in a rest day, get my sashimi, weigh my meals, just relax. Whereas, like, some people would go to beach club and be like, oh, fuck, I need to drink, I need to do, you know. And, like, I can kind of separate myself yeah. from doing that. Yeah. You but um, I can imagine it being pretty hard if you're not that mindset, you know, that way in You've been there, like, for five or six years. It's just normal for oh. the afternoon. Yeah, it's home, nothing home, home. yeah, nothing's new to me there. I'm like, it's just home, you know. Are you looking um, forward to going back to Preston for a bit? <laughs> uh, I like to go see my family, like, but I don't yeah, know if yeah, I can yeah. stay. No, yeah, Fernando, you know it's, how messy you are. You know, it's like nice, like honestly, like, when I come back to for, to Wales that time, like I loved it for like eight weeks, and then it started to get old. But I'm that type of person, man. Is like. I honestly, I struggled to stay in one place for a long period of time. Even when I came here, I was like, I said to a few of my friends back in Dubai, it's like, oh, I love it here right now, but I know I'll hate it in like four weeks, you know? Why do you think that is? I don't know, man. I just, I think like Dubai is great, but it's like after every now and again, you just need to leave for a little bit. Mm. You get caught. It gets like overwhelming, but I don't know if I could, I don't know if I ever can be, I, I just can't see myself. I don't know where I'm ever going to settle, settle, you know, because it's like, I'm just so used to kind of just doing my own thing. Like no one tells me, Oh, you can't go away. You can't yeah. do this. Yeah. I just do it, you know? So I don't really know where I'm going to settle, but I mean, we're talking about maybe like trying to head to Vegas and just seeing what it's like there. I think it'd be nice to have the balance of two, but I always think I'm going to need somewhere to get away, you know, and not yeah. just be so caught up in the hustle and bustle of Dubai. Cause like, that's actually why I live further out now. So I live about 25 minutes, 30 minutes out from like central, central Dubai. Um, but it's just so I can kind of feel like I'm away from everywhere. Because yeah, when quite, I was in, quiet, Dubai, in that, isn't it? it's quite quiet out like when you move like 25, 30 minutes out of city. Yeah, like I, I'm in a really quiet, like residential place. And like I said, I've got a big villa. It's got like a movie room and everything, you know? So it's like, it feels like home. Whereas when I'm in an apartment in JVC, when I was in the apartments in like the JVC area, it was just, very like I was in a city. Yeah, yeah. It just felt like you wasn't settled. Like yeah, but, 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 but. it just felt like I wasn't home, you know. So even though I'm a bit further out, I don't mind being a bit further out because I kind of like I'm as bad it sounds, I'm like less accessible to like, oh, I'm just gonna pop in and see you or like, you know, like I live further out, so it's just a, it's just an easier way to just <laughs> isolate a little bit. Because I'm like I am like I'm really friendly with people, but I also like to kind of be in my own zone and space every now and then. I think we make it on back though because in off season I'm really friendly and want to talk to people, and then everybody thinks they can come and chat to me, and I'm like I'm prepping. I'm yeah, alone. <laughs> it's mental. Yeah, it's true. It is true, and that's exactly I'm exactly the same as you. So mm-hmm. I know exactly where you're coming from there, but it's just trying to get that balance. And I think that's what we spoke about earlier is like just trying to find being happy all the time, isn't it? Yeah, just day to day happiness like is the win. And as you grow, goal, like, that's the fucking goal. Yeah, as you grow up, you start to learn more and more about yourself. Like, even I, like, you know, I went through that crazy phase uh, in 2021, 2022. But, like, I don't regret it, No, you know, because I had a fucking ball of a time. It was it was a good time. But, like, do I wish – if if I could go back again, would I have done it differently now, knowing what I know now, like, 1,000%, you know? But well, that's I can't what, say – That's what makes you who you are, bro. Like, I've done it. You've done it. Like – you almost you have to go through them things to then realize yeah. what you really want and what you don't want. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it's like I had fun, but you know, part of me wishes are oh, I should have probably been a bit smarter. But then part of it was like, you know what, I just fucking learned a lot yeah. and enjoyed. But would you not say like you are now? You've got more wisdom now because of that. So you are actually yeah, smarter. Do you know what I mean? Like, like as bad as it sounds, like I've never really been into cars and shit. 
and I had all the cars. And now the thought of me getting a really nice car, I'm like, I, I like don't be wrong, like a nice car is nice, but would I go get a supercar? Hell no. Me and Q you know? had this conversation the other day. I said I would never do it again because it's just a waste of money. But you have to do it, and I think yeah, and to know it was kind of at the same sort of point where we was like. It was like a fuck you to everybody else. Like in a sense, like watch me, I, I can do this. Like I can do whatever I want. I I always had that time where I, I come back out of a, a long holiday, um, and maybe <laughs> like a Queen's holiday, and I was basically like like you was like venting to show people like I'm fucking on top still. But really inside, you actually wasn't. But you're like I fucking I'm back on top. Like watch. Yeah. Me. And then now you yeah. realize like, that's it's short lived joy. It's just a, like it's for everybody else, not for yourself. Yeah, and as well, like I think, like I've said it before, like you start to put these materialistic goals into play and then you realise that they don't really make you happy and that you actually end up unha- more unhappy because you're always like, what's next, you know? You what's the next like, thing? You know? unrealistic, like, expectations for yourself because yeah. I always say this about, like, celebrities or fucking movie stars, like, their life must feel like shit because they've done everything. And it's like... Right, yeah, and it's hard to feel fulfilled, right? Yeah, because you're like, well, what's not like... Like you say, you get a Lambo, right? Where do you go from that? Honestly, bro, that's what that's the the moment. That moment was what made me question what the fuck am I doing? Because I remember I had a Lamborghini, I was like, oh, I'm a bit bored of this now. I was like, what should I get next? And I was like looking at a um getting another like continental, oh, sorry, getting a continental GT3, which is like the the rare one, or um getting another Bentayga. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, this is my biggest life choice right now. Like, like I literally went from a McLaren, then got a Lamborghini, like, hated them both. And then I was, like, had the range, sold the range, had a Bentayga, got rid of that. Then, you know what I mean? I was just like, what am I doing yeah. with my fucking life? And the, funny, and the funny thing was, is last Christmas, I bought a fucking other range, and then I sold it in January. <laughs> you, not you, you not remember when you drove into a lamppost outside my house in that Rover 45? Yeah, that's what I mean. Rover, yeah, 93 right? or 45. Was it, was it, 45. My, dad, my dad, Kieran, my dad got in this car. Like, 750 quid. 750 quid. Yeah. I was like, there's a car. Jamie t- turns up to my fucking apartment and just reverses straight into his lamppost and like bends <laughs> the wheel. I was just like, oh, yeah. fuck yeah, it, 750. That was the best 750 pound I've spent. I swear that, that <laughs> thing lasted me like six or nine months and it was just fucking bomb proof. Yeah. I think <laughs> the insurance was more than the car. Yeah, like exactly. 15 well, we had a chat with someone the other day and he, he actually mentioned you he was saying he was training with Zach Khan like as a, a present. And then he said, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he said, like, this this fucking remember when you had like because I had a mini and you had a mini, didn't you? No mean yeah. the blue mini you had. Yeah, yeah, I blew it up. Yeah, yeah, you fucking yeah, literally. Like but he said you turned up in this mini and he was like, just you just like started training, you trained with Zach Khan. And he's like, to see you now is like fucking absolutely ridiculous and like how much you've grown how much you've changed and everything and i was like but yeah jay jay's just a normal normal guy you know what i mean a normal person yeah, just, yeah. You know i mean it's like people don't realize they think they only see like the end result now don't they they don't yeah see exactly and they, and they see like all like you know like the flashy lifestyle and shit and they think that you change as a person or whatever but it, like honestly like living that living that life uh the year or two that i lived um Makes makes you realize like who's actually there for you and who's just there for the ride, you know. But what do you think? You learn so much. What do you think caused that? What do you think made you do that? Um, I, I don't really know. Like I think after like I got divorced, I was just like fuck this. Like I'm just gonna fucking put all my fucking energy into business and just try to get rich, man. Like that's honestly the way I thought. I was like fuck this. I'm just gonna fuck fuck everyone. I'm just gonna get rich. Mm. And then, like, it was just the point where I was just trying to, like, whatever I could try and make money from, I'd try and make money from, you know? Like, I'd, like, I, I'm not smart with it, bro. Like, I had, like, fucking, I, I earned a lot on, um, like, crypto, you know? Um, I'd invest money into there. I'd, like, look for any opportunity that came up, I'd look to invest in it. And then, obviously, when I started reaping the rewards of that, then I was like, fuck, I got all this cash. Like, the fuck? Like, let's just go, like, spend it, you know? As bad as it sounds. You That's the way well, I when you're earning a certain amount of money as well, that number isn't the it doesn't fulfill you. It's just a number. It's just a number. So then you kind of need to be like, oh well, I need to buy something with this money to then make it feel like I'm doing. Yeah, it. and as well, like I just started to like I don't know, like I just 
I just, uh, it's really hot. It was hard for me to like, I just thought, fuck it, let's just like live. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but it right. sounds and like without sound like being an ar- arrogant with it, I just wanted to fucking like, just wanted to get rich, man. That was literally my only, like my goal. Yeah. My goal was like, I'm going to be like, I want to be the one known as one of the best coaches. And in the meantime, I'm just going to get rich and just keep trying to get richer and richer. And then obviously just didn't really like have any in fulfillment out of it. It wasn't like, at the end of the day, like money doesn't buy your time or there's no point having all this money. If you can't spend it with someone like Kieran, you've got a family and all that. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's different. Like if you're it, like, you probably think your first like thought of like thought is probably right. I need to provide for my kids, my family and make sure they live. You know what I mean? But when you do it on your own, yeah, man, it's yeah. just like, you just see all these people come and go and like, then you realise yeah, so what me, they really want. I wouldn't even think twice about getting a supercar because it's just, it's not in my forte because of the family. You know yeah, you'd mean? be like, what the fuck's me having a supercar? It's only fit fucking one person, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. It's, the same, it's the same principle as when you're prepping you get more enjoyment out of giving to somebody else or seeing the joy out of somebody else than you do really like yourself. Like you sat like yeah. people yeah. say, oh, he's better crying in a Ferrari. But like you say, after six months of driving around and spending a fucking porch, you think, right, that, is that it now? Right, right, fucking hell, what? Yeah, it's, it doesn't last, man. Like, trust me, and, like it doesn't fill you with any enjoyment. That's why, like I said, uh, the year after that, I was like, right, let me just like, you know, not like take my coaching back, but just focus on serious clients. Let's put some more effort into bodybuilding. Just find that like happy place where I used to be when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, that's kind of what my mindset was at um, back then. And, you know, I kind of felt like I got there in a lot of ways. And But you know what it's like with life. It fucking gives you obstacles. And then you're always like questioning everything again and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah. But I mean... I don't regret it. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, but man. um I definitely wouldn't I, I lost a lot of money on cars. Like I lost fucking so much money on cars over the years. Even like the what like I had like four fucking watches, you know. And then in my head I was like, What's the fucking point? I mean four watches can only wear one. And then yeah. at the end of the day you wear it and it, the yeah. time doesn't even work. So what's the point of even having one? Yeah, you got your fucking yeah. and it it's no, uh... I'll just wear an app. I'll just wear an Apple watch now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what you notice really is People who are really wealthy, like not rich, but really wealthy, they don't even care for like that sort of stuff. It's yeah. more about investments. It's more about like making more money because it's fun to make more money or more businesses because the business is fun. It's not really about the actual figure of money, is it? Like, it, yeah. Once you become a multimillionaire, say, like Kieran's got some friends who are like multimillionaires, they don't really care about the money. They just care nah. about the, the, the fun part of business. Honestly, like, you know what I'm saying? It says there's more to life than money. It's true. Like, it's no point having money if you've got no one to fucking spend it with. Mm-hmm. And money don't buy your time. Yeah, you've you always divided. 100%. You know what I mean? So you've got, you got to find the balance, you know what I mean? And that's, I mean, like, I, I invested, obviously, a lot into raw foods, um, which was, like, my main investment. And then, then the rest, I was just like, you know what? I just want to live a life where I don't have to really stress or worry about money, but I can kind of do what I want and go where I want to go within reason, yeah. you know, within reason, like, like, like obviously I'm not going to go to fucking, um, I don't know, like top fucking hotels and all that sort of shit, spending 10 grand a night or whatever, but I can go and stay in a nice hotel in a nice, uh, I don't know, in a different country for a few nights if I want to, you know, and that's kind of yeah. where I wanted to get to. And then like now, even like now, I don't even think about money anymore. I think more about, okay, like helping others, coaching and leaving an impact there, you know, and, and I love to work with like top level guys and top level girls because I feel like it's just a different style of coaching when you're working with like pro athletes or, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you go back and forth. It's yeah. not like a dictatorship. It's like, okay, how's you, how does your stomach feel on this? Or, you know what I mean? Like, um, even like now, like with Rob, like obviously working with Rob again, I'm pretty sure he'll, by the time this goes up, he would have said something anyway. But, um, <laughs> if he doesn't, it's already out there. If he doesn't, just edit this bit out. But no, no, like, even like working with, like, with Rob, like, Rob, like, we literally go back and forth. Like, it's not like, this is how it's done. It's is like, staying, okay, Rob. Let's, let's get this out. Is he staying 12-12 or is he going open? No, he's, he's, we're going to do a few 2-12 shows. 
um, yeah. this year, and then we're going to reassess from there. But I know, like, for example, Alicante, Rob, was 218 and full as a house. Oh, the, the Alicante show? Yeah. Yeah, he looked, that's his best look. No, no, and it, don't get me wrong, was he, was, was, it he was 218. When, when he was against Nathan Diasha, was that Alicante? Yeah, yeah, Alicante, yeah. And then I believe we did. We got him in Italy. He was two thirty three because we really pushed like as much fullness as possible for that show. And in Alicante, he had like a bit of a food poison on the day, so obviously he was a little bit lighter. But I was like, look, you can easily weigh in at two twelve because your weigh ins on Friday. You yeah. compete on Sunday at night. Yeah, so he's got a lot of time to fill up. So I just said to him, yeah. I said, look, look we need to be smart. Two twelve though. Um, I think naturally his his physique's gonna want to go to open because otherwise he's gonna have to restrict himself so much in the off season. Mm. But let's be honest, if Flex can make two twelve, I yeah. think anyone can make two twelve. <laughs> you think like yeah, 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 he's gonna have to obviously. It's I think for Rob, like this is just my my opinion, he's gonna have to take some sort of muscle from his legs and put it elsewhere. Yeah, make two twelve. It's the same. Uh, you said. Like, you're not going to prioritize your upper body because you need more leg. Rob has to flip yeah. that. Yeah, hundred percent. The the thing is, like, I feel like sometimes just your like his legs are so dominant that if he loses any fullness, it's going to go from his chest delts back. We, so you know, I have the same thing though. It's like if I push and push and push, my back just fucks off. My legs. Yes. Like, oh, you full because your chest. I'm like, my chest never goes anywhere. Like, yeah, so- and, and and this is like, um, but I I think like the way Rob would have to stay in two twelve two twelve is he's literally gonna have to starve to make weight and like I'm talking fast, so you know if he wakes up in the morning he could be two eighteen in the morning of of the weigh in and wait and just not eat and he will be two twelve at night. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what he has yeah. to do. Like, there's no like that that that's in my opinion the best way to just make weight. It's just fast. You know, and then fucking Friday night come and start loading, and you got two, three, two and a half days to load. You know, mm. you got all day. Oh, you got Friday, you can get a few meals, and you got Saturday all day, and then you're on Sunday you night, think, so you got you're time to load. Do you think he's taking too much off to come back from though this year? So right now we're trying to bring back his upper and like, don't, like I've worked with him now for nearly a week, and I'm telling you, his upper body's coming back. Yeah, yeah. Will it come back? Yeah. Quick and he's he's still like I mean he went up to two nineteen and this yesterday morning he was two sixteen, you know. So he's still yeah, so his metabolism's on fire. So I, I honestly think like it will be definitely a, a better look than the previous looks that he's had. Um, but like the main thing is like when you're working with like athletes like Rob, it's like it's just going back and forth, man, all the time. Like I don't like you know. I, He'll check in with me pretty much like every day, every other day. Um, similar to what we did, Kieran, like, you know, every other yeah. day, going every other day when we get close to the show. Um, like Rob likes to go daily. And I think sometimes if the athlete wants that, then you have to do that, you know? Like, I do I think it's necessary that we go every day? Maybe not every day, but then at the end of the day, you can't miss bringing a better package if you're on top of it every single day. Mm. You know, and yeah. and then and the thing is, it's like when when you got a high level athlete who clearly knows their own body and clearly not afraid to work, clearly he's always got in shape. It's like, okay, I think this. What do you think? And it's finding a happy balance sometimes and a happy medium. You know, yeah, almost so it's like, like yeah. he he will like I I seen it on the way into Tampa. Like he was just over fucking everything because he was just like, yeah, we keep doing this and we keep doing that. And it's like that's where you need a coach to step in and go. One sec, Rob, just chill out a little bit. What about this? Yeah. Bro? What about that? And like that, I mean, it, the accumulation, it will work. He's doing two hours of cardio on the stairs, bro. He's doing, he's doing 30 minutes now. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah. it's like more, more, more. Yeah. And I think if you like, again, sometimes like we're all, I'm the same. If someone, if someone doesn't take, give me reins, like, sorry, someone doesn't like put a leash on me, then I'll just keep on going. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think you have to always with with a top level athlete. You have to always you have to always like approach it differently because you've got to understand that they've won shows, they've 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 won big titles, you know, they've turned pro. So you've got to approach it in a total different way. Where you're like, 
especially when you know someone's mindset of wanting to push, like I, I, sometimes you have to be like, okay, this is what I think you should do. Are you comfortable with doing that? And then you come to an agreement. So for example, the other day, you know, like he was running T3 and T4. I was like, look, let's probably like take your T3 out or at least drop it down. And he was like, or take your T4 out and just keep your T3 in, you know, can like T3 in. Let's just try use less thyroid drugs to create more fullness because right now it's not needed. Mm. Um, and that's when he was like, oh, gee, I feel comfortable doing this. Uh, I'd rather just cut my T4. And I'm like, okay, if that's what you want to cut, just cut your T4 for now, we'll do that. And then we'll just reassess, mm. you know? So yeah. it's like more it's like you make a suggestion and then you go back and forth, you know? Because yeah, Rob's a fucking yeah. a great bodybuilder. He's won British titles. Like, you know, he, he doesn't need someone to fucking coach him 1000% he needs someone to pull the reins on him but he knows his body you know what I mean he's he's done yeah. multiple things just like I said like you know I take certain compounds and I look like shit so when someone tells me to take a certain compound I'm like no well I've used I've done that over and over and over again and I look like shit you know if they yeah. say to me oh well that's what you gotta do and I'm like well I'm not gonna do it if I look like shit because I know I'm not stupid I know my own fucking body like, yeah. bro, every time I take insulin, I swear I look like shit, yeah? Unless I am really lean and I use it on, like, once, like, on a leg day. You know what I mean? But if I'm to use insulin every single day, I get, I just look like shit, you know? Yeah, you get, like, um... And every time, I just look, I just look like, a, like my, I get started getting cankles and my, like, legs and... I don't know, every single time. So, like, I just know insulin, just whatever it is with my body, I just don't, it just doesn't work. Like, I don't feel good off it, so why the fuck am I going to take it if I don't feel good? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like, in prep, it's a different story because like, I used, in prep on, um, like, a lot of leg days, I used, like, small amounts of insulin with, um, like, the first, like, three or four meals to keep the fullness in my legs, and it worked great, but I was so fucking lean that it's, like, it just created fullness, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So but, when, but I mean like Kieran used insulin fucking most of this prep and never struggled with that no I'm, I'm fine on it yeah you know yeah. what I mean I mean I've just never used insulin for, for years like properly and every time I I'm like even like this this like I, I jumped back on cycle like last week I was like right I'm gonna start insulin I swear like four four or five days of it I was like my fucking legs have fucking water in them I was like <laughs> I can't do this you know it's just like I like, get lean in the meat when as soon as insulin goes in, my body starts to get fucking leaner. Some people do, man. Everyone's that's... different, aren't they? Everyone's, Everyone's different. different. Yeah, and that's you why know, every... all these things that I say, is like all the things we've got are all tools to use, and they don't have to be used. Do you know what I mean? It's no. like it's person dependent, and do they need that? And it's like a lot yeah, of people yeah. now are like talking in absolutes because they want to look like they or they know the answer or they've got the fucking. Do you know what I mean? The secret. And, it's like and because of all the yeah. science as well, and all that science behind it is always like, well, this is what you've got to do. But some people are like, oh, that doesn't fucking work for me. Bro, I swear this year, when I started dieting down, I was like, right, I'm going to take, I got some advice off someone that I know, like, who's really clever, well, not, well knowledgeable. And I was like, right, okay, I'm going to kind of like listen to that advice. I'm going to take a really small amount of tests and bump my primo out like shit, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. like, I have no pop. I have no fullness at all, you know? And yeah. I was like, look, this clearly doesn't work for me. I, and I give it like, you know, three, four weeks. And I'm like, nah, I got to go my own way. Like, I got to do what I know is best for me. Yeah. And I think I think you'll see that. With, I, I have exactly the same, mate. Like, fucking 300. I think I spoke to you about it. Like, 300 mega tests. Yeah. You test it's like, fucking hell, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not giving the fullness that I need. Do you know what I mean? Especially yeah. at that level. And then especially like yeah if you know your physique like lacks can like lose pop very easily then like you, you need yeah. to know what to do to kind of gain the pop back like we ran Kieran pretty fucking high test this year yeah you know? yeah do you know what mate? it felt fucking really good off it as well and and again like look look at the, the it doesn't lie like we ran him a high test it was like you know pretty like good dosages but yet He's on top of his health supplements and his blood work comes back pretty damn fucking good after yeah. just three weeks or after a week after the show. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm fucking not even that, mate. Three days. Three days after the show. And I mean, yeah, his ALT is up, but at the end of the day, his ALT is going to be up because he's been running orals. He's close to show, but now we come off the orals. 
we run a rebound phase, and then we go to health phase. It's like the new school's like, oh, well, the rebound doesn't matter. I'm like, well, if the rebound doesn't matter, why would Jay Cutler and all that doing it for years and years and years? Yeah, bro, I had this argument mm -hmm. all the time. Like When I finished prep, everyone was like, no, drop into a health phase, drop down to a cruise, you ain't going to build any muscle. And I'm like, well, why are these guys like putting on the most size they probably put an all fucking year post-show? Uh, it's just yeah. from it's just fullness from food and like water retention. I'm like, cool. I'd like the fullness. It's great. I need yeah. the yeah. off season. I don't yeah, want to go into excuse. I don't want to go into an off season being the smallest I've ever been with fucking low testosterone and no fucking fullness. It's like I'd rather yeah. I go into a, an off season with my blood's a little bit worse than they meant to be with all this fucking fullness. Yeah, yeah, and then you go for a health phase, you get your blood work bang on track in five, six weeks, and then you go into your next phase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, like it's like basically it's like the same thing that's happened to me. So like I've basically done it that way round where I've right. I've obviously yeah, I've had operation, but I um I had like seven weeks off site. Well, pretty much on TRT, and I look like shit right now. You know? Yeah. Because I haven't. I, yeah, I haven't trained and stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna get my I'm getting my body healthy. But it's like yeah, I look like shit. So now I have to fucking get back into shape and get some fullness back. Whereas like you said, if you do it the other way around, you kind of go into that health phase being full and you just hold it there. Yeah, you just hold it. You hold it with food. And you're going to drop a little bit of fullness, but then you've got that time then to then allow your fullness to drop. By the time you've got your health back into into a really good range, you still fucking look great. Yeah, and as yeah. well, and then you just push back up slowly. And again, you just like more relaxed on the orals and stuff and you know, in, in the off season and you'll keep your blood work in good check. It's like, in my opinion, like just going crazy hard on toxic drugs in the off season doesn't really make too much sense. But I mean, no. if you've got that base of like test EQ Primo or whatever, or test EQ MPP, whatever it is, like you, you can stay pretty damn healthy if you're on top of like supplementation. Like yeah, EQ might, you know, bring your hemocrit and red blood cells up a little bit. Um, might bring blood pressure up, but again, it's all can be counteracted. You know, yeah. this is, the, and that's yeah. the thing. Like, it's I look at it as well. Say we were talking about the back end of a prep. It's like you've got to do what the fuck you've got to do to win a show. No one's looking going, yeah. oh yeah, but he got third, but he didn't use as many drugs though. And it's like, yeah, but no one fucking cares if you used a, a lot of drugs or not a lot of drugs. Like you've got to win, yeah. regardless of the, yeah, the, the end result. It's like you have to, you, you're doing it to win. You're not doing it to be like, oh, yeah. I used hardly any drugs. And it, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like they kind of people want to boast on it. And yeah, yeah, it's great if you can prep on fucking a lot less drugs. And there's people out there who are just genetic freaks and can prep on fuck all. Bro, you I, know? Use, but, I use no trend on this prep, yeah. And I, yeah. Regret, the fuck, I regret it. And I, all the time, yeah. I was like, oh, I feel great. I want not using trend. I didn't win. Simple as that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. maybe if you used trend like everybody else, you would have won. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I think, like, I'm not against using trend with anyone. I think it's a great drug, but I understand that, you know, there's a lot of sides that come with that. Um, and if that, if, if that's something that really affects someone, then yeah, like, maybe don't use it. But if it doesn't affect you, then like a small amount can only do you, only get you harder and better, you know, and drier. Yeah, I think like I was saying, it's almost like people are bragging that they've used less drugs, but they've not. Yeah. So it doesn't really equip. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, 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 I'll be honest, I was doing it. I was like, I've not used Trenol Prep. I've not used Trenol Prep. I'm, I'm not, I don't really need it. You didn't win, Ryan. So you do. Yeah. Need it. And I think like, um, you can't win though, innit? Because if you then take a decent, like a, an adequate amount of gear, then you, you, oh, like I've had it before. Oh, Jay pushes loads of drugs. But then I've had like, look at my client's blood work. It's fucking healthy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're doing what, they're doing. I'm not, I'm not like, Everyone's version of pushing is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm pretty sure if you go to like a big time coach and say, or I don't know, like people in fucking Egypt or whatever, their pushing's probably different to the people in, I don't know. I know like the Arabs push fucking a lot of gear, but this is right I would think I'm, yeah, they, they, I, I would think I'm pushing and they're pushing stupid, like, I think, okay, this is quite a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, this is probably the maxed out. And their maxed out is like four times what my maxed out is. You know what I think? Yeah. Is well, bro, I, I think, I think the, the new generation of people coming into bodybuilding to compete aren't actually competitive bodybuilders. 
the people who like the idea of competitive bodybuilding. So then it's all like for Instagram and so on. So then when they hear about this, yeah. like, fucking hell, like when we started bodybuilding, it was only people who were like door lads, fucking people yeah. who were serious. Like they were like, fuck it, just do what needs to be done to win. Like, but now there's a lot of like snowflake fucking generation coming through me, like, oh, he put me on 50 mega Vanavar and 50 mega Winnie. Oh, wow. And then you'll have some of a coach trying to steal that client going, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, it's really, yeah. Like, yeah, it's all just like me and Kira's on about it today. Like, everybody on Instagram yeah. is almost trying to like outdo the other coach, being like, oh, he yeah, does yeah, this too much. He does this too much. It's like all dick measuring, isn't it? Yeah, so that's why it's just really frustrating the new school. And it's it's obviously like there's good parts we can take from it. Like, you know, let's be honest, like back in the day, we didn't really do blood work when I like when I was fucking just started on gear, you know. I mean, I started when I was 21, 22. Didn't we really even think about blood work then? It wasn't really didn't a know thing. About it. Didn't know about you know? it. Yeah. No, um, no, so no, there no, is no, positives no. To, there is positives to it because now we know like the supplementation supplementation we can take to get blood work in range, you know? So like, that's the positive part from it. We know a lot more about health and, you know, we can apply that to um, like bodybuilding, but I think like it's kind of sometimes getting taken way OTT. So yeah. it's, it's just finding that happy balance. Like we can take good parts of the old school generation and good parts of the new school generation and just put it together. And it's just trying not to, like, I feel like the diet and the, the diet and the like, the diet and the training being overcomplicated has probably made us regress a little bit, but then the supplementation being overcomplicated has probably actually benefited us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, do think, I do think now there's too much access to information. So there's too, yeah. too much like information for people when really if they just did the basic shit, they'd make progress. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Like, I mean, bro, like, I train with fucking Chris Cormier. Like, he put me through legs. Um, I did back with him and it was probably like one of the hardest leg sessions I've done and I did a leg extension a leg press and a hack squat yeah 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 and that's it what, what it was like 40, it was like 45 minutes and mm. I swear yeah. it was just like and we didn't do no drop sets we didn't do fuck, all we did was straight fucking sets yeah <laughs> with Chris Cormier shouting at me and when Chris Cormier shouting at you if he says you know Chris Cormier shouts at you, says two more. And then he shouts at you again, he says two more. And he shouts at you again, he says two more. So you think you're failing and you've done a fucking 10 reps before you failed. That's the, yeah. that's yeah. the thing as well. It's the, the level of intensity that you train at. Yeah. Rather than being about the most efficient, the most exercise selection. It's like you say, a leg extension, a leg press, a fucking hatch squat. But it, like, how do you train, how do you perform them? And, and what intensity yeah. do you perform them at is the real defining factor, not... Like, yeah. if you've done a fucking upset, drop set, like, fucking this foot position, that foot position, it's like... Yeah. Hard work. There's a million ways to skin a cat in it. Like, Chris's philosophy on training was, you know, legs, we were doing pretty much 20 reps, like, anywhere from, like, 15 to 20 reps or 15 to 25 reps. And it's, like, he was very on top of form, but it was very, like, slow negative and drive out hard, you know? Yeah. It was, like... But it's very specific in that sense. But it wasn't really over-analytical. You know, it was still like the bread and butter movements for yeah. legs. I think, I, think, so, I, think, I think so many people have to use intensifiers on everything because they simply can't just put enough effort into a straight set. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love using intensifiers, but I believe that, like, I know the limit of failure, so it works. Yeah. And, yeah. and I actually feel like you have to... Like, a lot of my training programs when I give to clients initially a very high volume, high intensity, because I don't believe that 90% know what true failure is or can train to true failure. So yeah, I believe that you have to give them. That's why, like, when, um, say, for example, like, when I first started working with you, Kieran, I do four sets. I do, like, one drop set, one rest pause, or one rest pause, one drop set. But yeah. now, like, I know your level of intensity. Like, it's like, okay, I can almost scale that back a little bit. Like, now when I train, I do... On my heavier days, I do one rest pause set and then one back off set. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm like I was saying before, on legs, I know I can generate that amount of intensity and that amount of failure on, like, one or two sets. But then on back, I need more yeah. sets that I don't connect with. So there's the same, yeah. with, same with, like, fucking the guys who are not just starting out, but, like, the lower-level guys, they can't generate yeah. as much intensity on a leg extension or a leg press than we can. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so they need three sets to do that. 
100%. So that's like similar to my legs at the moment. So my legs, like, for example, my heavy leg workout is the method of like one rest pause, one back offset. But then on my secondary quad workout and secondary hamstring workout, it's like three or four sets of like 25 to 30 reps, you know? So I'm the same concept there. Um, but I just like the, uh, y- you have to train a muscle, a weak muscle in a different way for in order for it to grow. Yeah. It's the yeah, only way to I, oh, I, and I, think... yeah, I totally agree because you just can't. It's a, I think it's down to a connection thing and how yeah. you recruit fibers and, and everything else. Like it, it's trying to elicit a response from that muscle and doing the same yeah. thing with the chest, which is or tricking with his shoulders. It just fucking blows up. It's like, yeah, yeah. you can train and, like it's like you could train chest every, whatever way you want and it will it'll look good. Kieran could probably do delts. Fucking, he probably just do side raises and connect with them so well, and that's why they look good. But you drive, drive the car, and he's fucking the punt. The <laughs> punt of <laughs> drive. <laughs> it's just like you can't really tell someone who has a strong body part how to train if they, it's already strong because it clearly works what they're doing. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think the only thing that's changed with my training as I got older is I'm a lot more controlled with my movements. Like I'm very, very like perfect form now because back in the day I would just fucking rag weight. You know what I mean? And it just was pure, it was just pure aggression back in the day for us, wasn't it? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. if I carried on training like that, I would just not be bodybuilding right now, you know? Yeah. So, like, I don't really, like, I don't have, like, niggles or anything because I train smarter. Like, I, I, yeah. I do select, I mean, I use the bread and butter basic movements, but I, I apply the, like, perfect form to where it's, like, you know, slow negative, pause at the bottom, drive out, yeah. down again, you know? It's very controlled now. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll uh, we'll get a fucking good session in when you're back. Yeah, definitely. I'll get for it. Where Where do you want to train at? Where are you going to train, bro? Where, wherever you, Wherever you guys want to train, you know, okay. I'm pretty much. I've got the car, so I'll just drive wherever. Right? It doesn't matter to me. Sweet, Kieran's. Are you, are you know, the, bro? You're in the middle of a field there. Where are you, bro? I'm honestly, mate. I'm fucking scared. For the last hour, I've been thinking I'm gonna get raped in a minute. Eh? <laughs> you actually <laughs> wanting to get raped? That's what it is. You're, you're the... Yeah, it's steamed up car. Can you imagine? I've got all my lights on so everyone can see me. I'm looking out, thinking, is anyone watching me here now? Yeah, can you imagine, <laughs> like on on the podcast recording, Kieran just gets fucking done in. We won't be able to do yeah. anything. Oh, oh fucking hell! He's still there, bro. I think he's fucking... Is he frozen? Bro, bro it's just fucking happened. Yeah. <laughs> just you, you got it. He, he fucking froze it. Right, bro, thank you for coming on, man. It's good okay. to catch up. I've not spoken to you in fucking forever, so it's... Uh... Yeah, we'll get some sessions in when I get back. I get back on the... So I'm, I think I'm going to travel down to Preston on the 4th. Yeah. And then... Um, so I'll be there Tuesday the 5th. So um, actually, I'm going to go up to Rob's gym on the fifth, probably, and then we'll kind of figure out what Kieran's doing and yeah, bro, and all that. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know what we're on with, and uh, yeah, we'll link up, yeah. there, bro. It'll be good Sweet. to see you. All right, man. Yeah. All right, bro. Catch, Catch you in a bit. Catch you in a bit. Bye. Bye.